The city locals claim to be the sporting capital of the world where too much sport is never enough. That's Melbourne, Australia. Here, sport's a religion. At the heart of it all is the MCG, known to the parishioners simply as the G, the centrepiece of the 56 Olympics. It's next door to Melbourne Park, and then there's the Australian Formula Grand, One Grand Prix at Albert Park. That's where we are right now, Albert Park. Not for motor racing, but for international swimming. Welcome to the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre, venue of the 16th FINA World Short Course Championships. It's Formula One swimming. 750 of the world's best swimmers with speed to burn. Just six days of competition. We had a thrilling first day and we're up to day two now. It's still a little bit chilly here. It's rug up time in the stands, just less than a fortnight before Christmas. But uh, the fans don't mind that. The swimmers don't mind it as well because uh, they are really enjoying the atmosphere here and the swims we had yesterday. This is uh, what we have ahead of us. It's heats, of course, this morning leading up to finals and semi-finals this evening. We've already had a swim off there in the 50 butterfly and uh, we'll show you that later on. That's for the last spot in the final heat star of the uh, relays there, the medley relay, the mixed medley relay. Boy, that can get confusing. The 800 freestyle for women, the women's 100 free, looking forward to that. And then the men's 100 free, that will be terrific. And breaststroke events and another relay right uh, at the back of it. Mike McCann with you. Bobby Hurley is uh, alongside me. And what a night we had last night, Bobby. Led off by this lady, Lani Pallister. And didn't the crowd go berserk? Oh, Pallister was magnificent last night, delivering Australia their first gold medal of the championships and really asserting herself on the world scene now in that 400 freestyle. Kate Douglas from the United States did the same. Almost got that world record, the long-standing world record from Katinka Hoshu. And she claimed her first individual world title of her career in dominant fashion in the women's 200 individual medley. And then the relays finished the night off and the Australian women, anchored by Emma McKeon, storming home in the fastest relay split in history to smash the world record and unify the world long course and short course goal as world champions and world record holders in those events. And not to be outdone, the Italian men's team, the strong Italian men's team, anchored by Thomas Cechon, they also broke the world record 
in the men's 4x100 freestyle relay and claimed the second gold of the night for the Italians. It was quite a night. It was a wonderful way to kick things off and uh, the Australians more than happy with their start. Two gold medals in six events. The Italians also with two gold and uh, also singles there to uh, the United States and South Africa with Matthew Sates. A wonderful performance by him. Let's head out to the warm-up pool. Uh, we've got some great action ahead of us this morning. Yeah, the stars are back out this morning and it's going to be a busy warm-up pool as we kick things off with the mixed 4 by 50 metre medley relay. There's four full heats, so eight teams in each heat, 32 heats with four swimmers in each team. So we'll see a lot of big-name swimmers getting their first swim of the championships, including Adam Peaty from Great Britain racing here this morning. The officials will have a lot to keep their eyes on right throughout the program, but especially in this uh, first event, this mixed 4 by 50 metres medley relay. Boy, it, it is uh, one of the most exciting events. It's, it's a newish event on uh, the international calendar, but we're talking about two men, two women, and uh, they're covering all four strokes there. And it is up to the, the teams, the federations, to decide whether it's men or women who swim the various strokes, as long as it's two and two. It can get very confusing, Bobby, but that's why you're paid the big bucks. It certainly is, and it's a new uh, Olympic event, the 4x100 mixed medley relay. And it was really only last year in Tokyo that after about three years in international racing, the coaches, the federations, they all figured out that it's really important to have a male breaststroke. Breaststroke being the slowest stroke, it's the stroke where the males have more of an advantage than the females. So that seems to be the locked in position and everything else around that is dependent on the strengths of your own team. So it's unpredictable and wild, especially at the four by 50 in the short course pool as we see the swimmers walk out in the first heat with the Australians down the bottom of the pool in lane eight. And that makes it even more confusing in some ways because it's an event that is not held very often. So we don't have the natural order of seedings. Here in the first of four heats, we've got Australia in lane eight and you've got the Philippines and Papua New Guinea who naturally don't have the depth that the Australians have are in lanes four and five. So we say how the lead league can change whether it's male or female and depending on the stroke and even more so here because you've got some of the big teams in outside lanes yes. it is going to be fascinating yes certainly we've got philippines in four and the australians down there in lane eight the australian team of brad woodward grayson bell they're putting their two males up first and alexandra perkins was from the butterfly league and meg harris Part of that world record breaking freestyle relay team last night will swim home the last two laps of freestyle. So backstroke to start, then breaststroke, free, you know, butterfly, and then the freestyle, of course. Day two underway, the first of four heats of this mixed 4x50 medley relay and uh, Australia down there in lane number eight, off to a good start through Woodward. Yeah, he got off well, Woodward, but he won't turn first at the halfway mark. That's Wang, swimming the backstroke leg for China at the top of the pool in lane one. They've got a strong team on paper as well, and the Philippines also swimming well through the first 50. We'll have a look at that first split. 23.87, Woodward gets his hand on the wall first and hands off to Grayson Bell. And this is the crucial leg, as you mentioned, Bobby, the breaststroke. It's still China out in front, and then you'd go to Australia and then the Philippines. Yeah, it looks like the top four teams have let off their two males, so China have taken over the lead now at the top of the pool. Australia in second, Chinese Taipei in the Philippines also competing strongly. Bell just making a strong move in that second 25, but it's China ahead of Australia. And uh, both China and Australia now with the two female swimmers swimming the butterfly in the freestyle. It's Perkins for Australia and Wang of China. Now the time's going to be important here because there are three heats to come with a lot of bigger and stronger nations still yet to compete. The Australians, they would want to win this heat. Meg Harris is going to anchor them home, but it's a solid lead here from China. We'll see what that margin is. It's 0.6 of a second, so Wu jumps in for China. Meg Harris in that yellow cap at the bottom of screen. The Australians are in a little bit of trouble if they don't win this heat. 
and we'll keep an eye on the world record as well. Uh, the first heat, the first of four heats, it's China in front, Australia in second place. The world record standing at 136.18. 136.18, we've got a 139, so that was a much slower final leg that slowed it down. Yes, China taking out the first heat as we watch the remaining nations just finish off this mixed relay. All unseated times this morning in heat number one. Touching there is Papua New Guinea and a good race home, Micronesia ahead of Guam. And this is how confusing it can get because uh, during that last freestyle league, it was China in lane one moving up alongside Guam in lane two. And you had to concentrate and realise that Guam would still get their butterfly swimmer in the water and China, of course, by that stage, up to the freestyler. In a 25-metre pool, things can be happening in every single direction. Yeah, it's messy, these 4 by 50 metre medley relays, just because each leg's over in basically 20 to 30 seconds. So you will see in these relays, sometimes the swimmers in the middle of the pool don't have enough time to actually get out of the water before their, the other swimmer comes back. So there it is there at, at the finish. That's China just touching out Australia, lanes one and eight, but there in lane two, Guam still jumping in and plenty of swimmers scattered around the pool of, as they haven't had enough time to exit towards the side. They're not allowed to exit the pool over the top of the touch pads. So it's helter skelter and exciting. And China and Australia, one and two, but there's a lot of racing still to it come. It took a little while over the results here, and uh, that's why the Philippines have been disqualified. So a backstroke violation for the Philippines, and it means that they are disqualified. China from Australia and Chinese Taipei. Heat two now, New Zealand in lane one. Colombia, Hong Kong, the USA in four here. Say leading off with two males. Cassis and Andrew, and then Kate Douglas and Alex Walsh. Well, Shane Cassis could blow this uh, heat right op wide open right from the start here. And he's off to a great start in lane number four. Also there, New Zealand with Dell in one. Yeah, he is the most dominant swimmer in the field. Leading off in this backstroke, you can see that margin there already over 25 metres. He is uh, not racing the individual 50 back here at these championships. And see what sort of time Cass has composed. 22.9. It's flying early this morning here in Melbourne. Hands off to Michael Andrew. Also a very accomplished swimmer in the United States, getting out well in front. They'll have Kate Douglas and Alex Walsh, the individual medley medalists from last night, anchoring this team home. So it's a strong team on paper for the United States this morning, and they'll sure to be uh, making some changes for tonight's team. But at the moment, Andrew with a big body length lead over the team from New Zealand in one. Yes, we're at the halfway point now in the water. The butterfly swimmers, it's still the United States. Uh, Douglas, New Zealand have gas on swimming this second leg. And alongside, it's uh, Colombia and Hong Kong, USA dominant. Yeah, out in front, Kate Douglas. Look at those long, smooth strokes. She's the American record holder in the 100 butterfly and one of the most versatile swimmers in the world. It says on screen, three seconds under world record. We'll see, uh, there's the world record line moving now as that world record was anchored by a male swimmer. So Alex Walsh swimming the freestyle leg. You can see that line just creep past her now. And, uh, but she does have a big lead ahead of New Zealand and Austria flying home too. The United States taking it out. New Zealand hanging on for second over Austria. And in fourth place, Hong Kong. Columbia follows. But that uh, is another example of just how confusing this can be because with 25 to swim, you would have sworn without thinking it through, that this would be a world record to the United States. But as you pointed out, the previous world record with a male anchoring, in this case, of course, the slower times recorded by the females, and the world record line slipped away and they were nowhere near it. 
Well, they actually, they're only 0.6 of a second away from that world record in the heats, the United States, and this is their B team. So magnificent performance, but generally speaking, the males are about three to four seconds faster per 50 meters than their female counterparts. So you can see just how quickly that world record line moved through, but it was a strong swim from Walsh. They'll bring in a lot of changes tonight for that final and beat one of the teams to beat. The USA beating New Zealand and Austria in heat two, 136.83, the winning time. Heat three with Great Britain in an outside lane there. South Africa to watch for. In lane three, the Italians will be strong in four and Germany in five. Yeah, strong team from Great Britain in lane one. Mehdi Harris, Adam Peaty gets his first race of these Melbourne World Championships. Benjamin Proud as well, world champion in the 53 this past summer in Budapest and Anna Hopkins. So watch for GB in lane one. They'll be swimming from behind with a female backstroker. But uh, the Italians and Germans also a really strong team on paper in lanes four and five. Expect the Italians and the Germans to get off to a very good start here, both leading off with uh, male swimmers in this first leg. Great Britain with the males, Petey and Proud swimming the middle legs here. Led off by Moura, Germany, in lane number five, Brunswick. The Great Britain side have Harris in the water, swimming the backstroke. Yeah, great start from Moura and that black cap of the Italian team in the middle of the pool. He was a medalist last year in Abu Dhabi in this 50 backstroke, so we know he's one of the best in the world when it comes to short course racing. He's got a narrow lead over Brunswick, so it is Italian, Italy and Germany. Out in front, 23.17 for Mora, and that team from Great Britain is 3.8 seconds behind. But Adam Peaty is not going to take too much ground off his male counterparts, but they will have Benjamin Proud up next when the Italians will have a female butterfly. So out in front, that's Cherasulo, the Italians stretching out that lead. Again, they're the only team to lead off with two male swimmers, so no doubt they're out in front and we'll see what the rest of the field can try and chase them down with. Yes, they've established a good lead here over Germany. Great Britain moving up to third through Petey. Great Britain now with Ben Proud in the water, the Italians, Di Pietro, and uh, Kush it is for Germany. As they are bringing it home now, they're just waiting for the freestylers. The last leg for Great Britain, it's going to be Anna Hopkin, and uh, for Italy, it's Conchinelli. Yeah, that was a crucial leg. You can see just how much Great Britain caught up, and now now there's three female anchors out in front. Actually, it looks like almost all the teams in this heat have female freestyle swimmers. So it's Germany that have taken over. Hopkins making a move as well. Italy's just fallen back, but it looks like it'll be Germany. With Angelina Nicola leading them home, and uh, Germany stopped the clock here in 137.9. Great Britain getting up for second, just in front of Italy and Bulgaria for South Africa. Next best with the fifth placing. Yeah, much quicker swimming overall from what we saw there in Heat 3. Not as fast as the United States in the previous one. But in fact, three teams there. That'll actually push Australia back down to sixth position with one heat to go. So really crucial when it comes to the times. But a great swim there from Kohler in Germany to take out Heat 3. She powered away through that freestyle leg was able to hold off Great Britain. The Italian team, they'll make a host of changes should they qualify for tonight's final. The results of Heat 3 with Germany winning it from Great Britain and Italy, 137.9. Just over half a second in front of Great Britain. This is going to be interesting. Canada are in lane seven here as they come out. Japan in lane number eight. 
got the Netherlands and Sweden in the middle lanes. Well, it's a strong team from the Netherlands in four. They are actually the world record holders from last year. But they're without Renomi Kroma with Jojo, who's retired since the last World Championships. It's the way they will start in this final heat. The Netherlands and Sweden, flanked by Turkey and Slovenia. We watch for Canada and Japan down there in seven and eight. Toussaint swimming the first leap for the Netherlands. She will lead them off. Corbeau, Castagne, and Valerie Van Roon. A strong team from the Netherlands in four. Peru there swimming out of lane one at the top of screen. One of these teams starting with the female backstrokers here. Turkey the exception. Tekken in lane number three. Yeah, and he gets a good start there, does Tekken. He's about a body length clear of his female competitors here, leading off this mixed medley relay. Down there in four, Kira Toussaint having a strong swim. We've seen her in these individual races. And also Ingrid Wilm of Canada in that red suit in lane seven. Turkey touched first. Canada gets the best out of the female leadoffs, and in the water now, diving in is Casper Corbeau from the Netherlands in lane four, making a big move off that changeover. And Saxe it is who still leads Turkey, so Turkey starting with the two men, and uh, then they will rely on the women to try to defend the lead in the second half of the race. It's Turkey in front, in second place it's Canada, lane seven, and in third it would be Japan. Yeah, in the water now for Canada, that's Ilya Karun. Fresh after that swim off race earlier this morning, and they've already pulled in the team from Turkey. So Canada taking over, chasing them down. That's the Netherlands in the top of the yellow lanes. But Karun, to fresh after breaking the world junior record last night, is having a powerful third leg. So it's Canada. Canada now taking a lead into this final leg with Rebecca Smith swimming the uh, freestyle. Going through in lane number four, the Netherlands with Van Roon. This is going to be a good finish between that pair. Also, the Canadians. What's for Japan in eight? In lane number eight, Japan, Matsui. But lane four it is, the Netherlands. They win it. Japan with that powerful finish. Take second, Canada in third place. Well, we flew home Matsui from Japan, but it wasn't enough to catch Valerie Van Roon. The Netherlands taking out heat four. Close racing there. You can see the unpredictability of these men, uh, these mixed relays as the final team to come in. That's the Maldives finishing off there in lane two. So the Netherlands take out heat four. And that looks like three teams, four teams going past Australia is going to miss the final in this event. They will not be one of the top eight teams, which is big news after the success last night in the women's relay. So really strong performance from the United States and a host of other countries. And they knock out the home nation from this mixed medley relay final. That's the finish. Matsui on the right for Japan. Touching second behind the Netherlands. 138.59 for the Netherlands. And, uh, what, five hundredths of a second in front of Japan, Canada in third place. That was heat four. They'll all go through to the final. And this is the way the final will look. The United States and Germany, Great Britain, Netherlands, Japan, Italy, China and Canada all doing enough to get through. Sweden, the first reserve, Australia, the second, and then New Zealand. It was, it was uh, all over the place. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bad mistake from the Australian team because they could have brought in Emma McKeon and Kyle Chalmers for tonight's final. Kaylee McEwen, Molly O'Callaghan. It would have been a hot team on paper. Could they have made it? We go from one extreme to the other. 
the mixed medley relay to the women's 800 metres freestyle. The slowest heat here, Katie Ledecky, the world record holder. She set it uh, only about five or six weeks ago in Indianapolis, a time of 7.57.42. The start list for the first of two heats here. And Sasha Gatt of Malta is in four. Stephanie Hootman of South Africa in lane number five. As we look down there, it looks like we've got... Oh, no, no, there is a swimmer in lane six. She's just uh, taking her time getting ready. Here we go. There she is now from Chinese Taipei, Jianan Ku. So the first of uh, two heats here will have the fastest heat this evening. Uh, Dewey it is of uh, Lebanon in lane number two, then Bosniak of Croatia, Gat of Malta and Hootman South Africa. They're in the yellow lanes, four and five. Two I mentioned to Chinese Taipei and from the Virgin Islands, it's Piper's. In lane number seven, the quickest of the entry times here in 8.38.74. Yeah, pretty even across the first 50 metres. We've seen Kuipers swim well over the past 12 months at these World Championships, getting a lot of experience. The 20-year-old down there in lane seven in that red suit, so she looks good at the moment. It's Gat that leads them through the first couple of laps, and also Stephanie Hoopman from South Africa. She won her 400-metre freestyle heat yesterday to kick things off at the World Championships. So watch for her to move through the back half of this race as uh, the 800 free. It's the first time. No, it's not the first time. It's uh, a 28 lap, sorry, 32 lap event with 28 laps to go here. And we will see the women's 1500 freestyle at these championships for the first time, as well as the contrasting men's 800 freestyle. So the new Olympic events have now been added to the short course world championship roster and uh, and squeezed into this six-day program. So a lot of opportunities for the distance swimmers now in both short course and long course and the Olympic program. Yes, for a long time, the longest of the pool events for the women was the 800 and not the 15. And as you mentioned, for the men, it was vice versa. There was no 800 for the men, but uh, there was the 1500. But now things are all being... Uh, equalized if you like and there's opportunities more opportunities yeah and the big news uh yesterday was leaping g the 400 freestyle world record holder scratched due to illness and she won't race the 800 final the fastest heat in fact which is tonight which means lani palestar the gold medalist from last night's 400 will be one of the favorites for that race so that final that fastest heat i should say Alistair will be in lane four. Leah Smith, another medalist from last night, swimming in lane five. Erica Fairweather, so the three 400 freestyle medalists will race in the fastest heat tonight. And uh, that's going to be a really good final to kick things off come finals time. And as Pallister excitedly said last night, uh, the longer the races are, the more comfortable she feels. Well, she's already taken the 400. But the fact that uh, the women now have the 15 as well, that uh, really gives the, the middle to longer distance swimmers uh, a, a more of an opportunity to try to take the treble as Ledecky so often has in the past, the four, the eight and the 15. So uh, it really has bridged that, uh, well, for the men it's bridged the gap, bringing in the 800. For the women, they've got the, eight, the 15 to, to concentrate on as well. Well, Ledecky's obviously won the 200 freestyle at world championship level and, and the Olympics in Rio, gold medal in the 200 free. So she's really proved to have range at both ends of the scale. And I was speaking to Lani Pallister yesterday. She she will race the four by 200 freestyle relay final tonight as well. So she'll kick off things with the 800 final and then finish the night with the four by 200 freestyle relay. So she has that similar sort of range of distances that she can compete in. Uh, similar to Ledecky and Ariane Titmus and a few of Summer McIntosh, some of those other big names. 
Not much between this pair in the middle of the pool here. Gatz and Hootman. In fact, as they turn here now, with 17 laps to go, 4.02.61, two one hundredths of a second separating that pair. It's Hootman in lane number five. She's uh, breathing to her right at the moment, and Gat is seeing her as she breathes to her right, and now they're going to reverse all of that. Yeah, you can see Hootman with that controlled stroke and a really consistent pacing strategy. She showed that yesterday in the 400, had a really strong second half, and that halfway split this morning is 418.99. So she'll be looking to really even split and try and come home in the second half of the race, similar to her opening speed. Her entry time is 8.39, so she's right on that pace. 8.39, she'll need to, to really come home at 4.19 again to match that time. So we'll see if Hootman and Gat can push themselves to personal best swims this morning. Hootman from South Africa, and uh, it would have been a pretty happy South African camp last night after the performance of Matthew Sates. A wonderful effort by the 19-year-old in the 200 individual medley. And an early victory can do wonders for a team at major championships. Yeah, huge swim from Sates to kick off the world chance for the South African team. Chad Leclerc also having a really positive semi-final of that butterfly. So he'll be racing for a medal tonight and back in good form is Leclerc looking to, uh, to be back on top in the longer butterfly distances. But just speaking to a few members of that South African team last night, and Matthew Sates is really a confident swimmer. We've seen him be inconsistent at the international level since Tokyo's Olympics and through Budapest and the Commonwealth Games this year. He, he, on his day, he can be the best in the world, but we've also seen him miss finals at different points due to different reasons. So being a confident swimmer to kick off the world champs like that, he's going to be a, a tough competitor to beat this week. And, He's one of the fastest seeds in the 200 free, the 400 free, and the 400 individual medley. So a lot of medal opportunities there for Matthew Sates and for the South African team. Just a youngster, but with his um, potential and the performances he's already put together, he's almost the leader of the team, or one of the leaders of the team already. Well, they've got less than 200 metres to swim here. And it's still Hootman in front of Gat from Malta. See that uh, margin on the left of screen there, about uh, 0.3 of a metre. Yeah, Holding. she hasn't been able to drop off Gat. So Gat's really hanging in there just on the hip of Stephanie Hootman. They're pretty equal across their splits. Hootman just turning and flipping her body a little bit faster than that of Sasha Gat. As they come down now to the... Uh, they're over the 600 meter mark now, so they'll try and use a little bit more kick and bring the legs into this race, just to increase their speed and put all their energy into this finish. Just five laps to go. But again, Gat keeps responding. Hootman has changed her speed and she's uh, splitting faster than what she was a few hundred meters ago, but Gat is trying to go with her. They're inside the last hundred now, and Hootman, Extending the lead to half to three quarters of a body length over Gat. Third place at the right of screen there in lane number three. It's Bojnak, the 18-year-old from Croatia. So she's been maintaining that position. In fourth at the moment would be uh, Ku from Chinese Taipei in lane number six. Kuiper's just behind her in lane seven. And then it's Dewey of Lebanon. Yeah, down with 50 metres to go. It's Hootman with a lead of just over a second. You can see a lot more legs coming into this race now for Stephanie Hootman. So she's got plenty left in the tank. She's opening up that lead over Sasha Gat. And she's really showing that she's got a strong second half of this race, just like she did yesterday. So her entry time is 8.39. She's going to get very close to that this morning. We'll see if she can finish this one off. A couple of strokes to go here for Stephanie Hootman. And Hootman it is who gets a time of 8.39.15 and it's uh, three tenths of a second inside her entry time. So I would imagine she'd be pretty satisfied with that. Gat in second place and Bojnak it was third in the 
first of the heats of the women's 800 metres. And they're all safely home now in this uh, first heat. As we mentioned, these are called the slowest heats, heat one, two. And on seedings, we've got the fastest swimmers uh, competing in the fastest heat, which is, for all intents and purposes, the final. But, of course, all times will be taken into account when determining the medals. Yes, Stephanie Hoopman there in that blue suit. Had uh, a nice streamline off all the turns. The turn's important in short course distance swimming. And was able to sprint home, getting the victory in heat one. Hootman ahead of Gat and Bozniak. 839.15 for the winner. Swimmers about to be called up onto the blocks there for heat number two. Here are the starters in this second heat. Mikimi Moriyama of Japan in four. So a full field of eight here for the second of the heats. Uh, the Swimmer from Spain, Atira Fernandez, the 18-year-old in lane one, Rainer of France in two, Roncata of Brazil in three. In those yellow lanes, it's Moriyama I mentioned, and also Ertan of Turkey. De Jong of the Netherlands is in six. Australia represented by Perkins in lane seven, and Avdic of Bosnia and Herzegovina in lane number eight as they complete the first 50 metres. And showing out early in lane number six, it is De, De, De Jong of the Netherlands. Yeah, much tighter racing here in heat two. You can see the swimmers all evenly paced through that first 50 metres or so. In the middle of the pool, as you mentioned, we've got Moriyama from Japan. She's got the fastest entry time of 8.24.83. And there's six swimmers in this heat that have entry times of under 8.30. So going to be really tight. Look at that here at the 100 metres. Six of them in a line. It's Imani de Jong from the Netherlands. The 20-year-old turning first through the first 100. Perkins in that yellow cap of Australia, not too far behind her. And uh, Ertan in lane five from Turkey in that red suit. Also swimming well and has got a really strong kick, an underwater kick behind her. So good turn there from Ertan, but Plenty to go in this one, just 150 metres down out of this 32 lap race. The swimmers have, they are fortunate enough to have underwater lap counters now. Underwater electronic lap counters, as well as lap counters on top of the turning end of the pool held by the officials. As you can see them showing the swimmers in case they want to lift their head up and check exactly how many laps still remain in this race as in the short course event it can get quite confusing to uh the swimmers can quite often lose count or lose track of where they are in the race there's only about half a body length separating six of the eight swimmers there uh, the exceptions are tira fernandez of spain who's back in seventh place swimming out of lane one and advic of bosnia and herzegovina in lane number eight but uh, little separating the other six and uh, at the moment it's lanes five and six uh, six, it is De Jong narrowly in front by eight one hundredths of a second as they turned over Ertan. And uh, then you would go across to Moriyama in four, one Kata, Rayner, and Perkins as well. Yeah, they're starting to separate a little bit. That's De Jong that seems to take control over this one. She's got the longest and slowest stroke, but it's the most efficient. You can see her arms moving slower than the other girls. So she's taking the least amount of strokes per lap. So she's swimming the most efficiently with the best technique. And she does look like a tall, long swimmer in the water as well. So De Jong there in the black cap. It's a swimmer from Turkey, Atan above her in lane five. That uh, looks to be working a little bit harder in that red suit. And uh, again, they've got entry times of 
8.24 in the middle of the pool. Moriyama just starting to move through now. The swimmer from Japan sitting in about third position. And uh, the swimmers in the middle of the pool starting to pull away from those surrounding them. Perkins just about a body length behind now, starting to fall off the pace is the Australian. So they're coming down towards the 300, in fact, the uh, 400 metre mark. They've got 18 laps to go. As you mentioned, Bobby, they can keep an eye on the laps, uh, both underwater and at the end of the pool that they're swimming at, at the moment. They're told now it's 17 to go, so when they go down to complete this lap, they'll be at the halfway point, 400 elapsed. And uh, our leaders still there, De Jong and Ertan. Maybe Ertan's in front just. It looks like she's taken over in lane number five. De Jong would be in... In fact, De Jong officially in front by 11 hundredths of a second. In second place, Ertan, then Moriyama. But there is little separating still most of the field. Yeah, that was the halfway split there, De Jong, 411.1. So taking it out aggressively, they're going to get well under 8.24 this morning, I would assume, because De Jong looks really smooth out there. Still hanging on to that lead. She really flips well. She tucks in nice and fast and gets her feet on the wall quicker than her competitors, especially being a taller swimmer. She does rotate well in and out of those turns. Now starting to move through is Moriyama and Ron Cato from Brazil. So the coaches starting to get a little bit more animated there on the side of the pool. A lot of whistling and a lot of waving. They've got the Brazilian coach, the Netherlands, the Dutch, uh, the Dutch coach, the French, and the Turkish. They're in a four-way battle here in heat two. Yes, lanes three, four, five, and six. Ronkata, Moriyama, Atan, and De Jong. Not necessarily in that order. In fact, it's still De Jong who leads, and uh, the margin is about. 0.3 of a second between first and second. A distance back then to Rayner and then Perkins and then it's Atira Fernandez and Advic. So uh, we're getting to the business end of proceedings here. They're coming down to turn once again and this will be at the uh, completion of, uh, let's have a look. Well, we'll have 11 laps to go. Now make it 10 to go. So they getting to uh, the time when it's they've got to make a decision well the hard part is when when you're counting laps is that most swimmers count meters or when i swam i used to count 50 meters 100 meters rather than counting down with laps so you can see with 11 laps to go it doesn't really rattle in your head that it's 250 meters or whatnot you have to sort of think about it so they will turn here at the 600 so eight laps to go, 600, uh, 200 metres to go in this race. And, and uh, Ron Cato from Brazil, she's got a lap counting correct because she made a really strong move through that third quarter of the event, that third 200 metre segment. And she takes over from De Jong, but De Jong looks the most comfortable of the swimmers. She looks like she's got the longest stroke and a smooth kick behind her. So potentially, without knowing too much about how these swimmers generally like to race, De Jong could be the one that could bring the legs in and sprint home a little bit stronger. So De Jong at the bottom of the screen, Rancato trying to pull away and the swimmer in lane four with the fastest entry time, who we haven't mentioned a whole lot, that's Moriyama from Japan. Yes, they uh, have now five to go. They'll be about to uh, enter the last 100 metres when they get down to the start-finish end once again. This has been a good move by Gabrielle Roncato, the 24-year-old from Brazil. She leads narrowly. De Jong is still there fighting hard. The swimmer from the Netherlands in lane six, Moriyama in third place. And then it is a ton, and they've cleared out on the rest of them. In fact, it's really becoming a race of three now because they're dropping off a ton as well. Yeah, she's fallen back, the 18-year-old from Turkey, and it's a swim, a race in three, a Brazilian at the top. The coaches are getting very animated in the stands. This is the bell lap, 50 to go. It's Brancato. We'll see what that lead is. It's point three over De Jong. We'll see if De Jong can start to sprint. Moriyama's increased her stroke rate as well. So this is going to be an exciting last 25 metres. 
De Jong's made her move. Roncato still holding on as they turn for the last time. De Jong now taking over from Roncato. And Moriyama's there as well. This is a race to the finish here. Roncato still holding on. Looks like she's done enough. Moriyama's finishing hard. And it is Roncato from Moriyama. De Jong in third place. Great finish there. So it was, uh, what, just under point four of a second separating the top three. Good racing. And well done to Gabriel Roncato of Brazil taking out heat two. Exciting finish there in heat two. That lead changed three times in the last 25 metres, I think. Broncato, the 24-year-old, swimming a personal best time there to touch the wall first as we just see Advin come into the finish. Gabriel Roncato, 825.45. Really strong performance and no doubt the coaching team was able to cheer her home. Here's the finish. That last five metres, and Roncato there. Sorry, that wasn't the finish. The bell ringing for 50 metres to go. De Jong looked like she accelerated and then just faded that last 15 metres, and Mor Moriyama was never too far away, but Roncato made a really strong move in the second 400 metres of that swim, and she gets rewarded. As the result of heat two, 8.25.45 by one one hundredth of a second over Moriyama. So in terms of uh, grouping those results together, the first two heats, of course, they are the slowest heats, but if, if um, anyone was to uh, challenge for the medals, it's got to be Roncato with that time, 8.25.41. That will be taken into account once the fastest heat is swum. Yeah, well, we did see yesterday in the men's 1500, Jervis from the morning heats finished sixth overall. Time now for the women's 100 free. Nine heats ahead of us. And we have just two swimmers here, so it looks like it's going to be lane three that uh, is missing. And it's uh, Alaid, uh, that is Nashari Alaid of Saudi Arabia and uh, Sonia Akhtar of Bangladesh in four and five respectively. No uh, entry times, but there is uh, a big discrepancy in their experience because uh, Alaid in lane number four is just, well, and she's still 15. She turns 16 in, what, about four days' time. And Akhtar is now uh, at 25 years of age. It's the youngster in front at the halfway point. Yeah, good, in, good, valuable international race experience here for Alayed, the 15-year-old. She went out fast, they just got caught up a little bit on that turn. Sonia Akhtar moving through now in the bottom of the yellow lanes. No entry time for these swimmers in heat one. So we'll see what sort of overall time they can post in this first heat. Nine heats to come, we see a lot of big names. An Olympic and World Championship medalists still to come through the course of the heats, but it's going to be Sonia Akhtar down towards the finish, 105.05, the 25-year-old taking out the first heat ahead of Alayed. She looks very pleased with that performance here in Melbourne. Just the two swimmers there, and uh, Alayad swam a very good first 50, but uh, she found Akhtar too strong the further the race went on. Here's the result of that first heat, 0505 and 106.59.
away we go in the second heat now. And uh, in lane number four, we've got Lee of Guam, Penube of Tonga. And uh, down there in lane number six, it's uh, Jimenez Bella. Jimenez Bella is uh, swimming for Timor Liest. Yeah, out quick though is Maria Castillo in lane seven. No much time for her. She looks significantly faster at this point in the race than the rest of the competitors. Splitting at the 50 meter mark in 27.37. So she should be well under the one minute mark today if she can maintain this speed, maybe down around 57 or 58 seconds too. So just breeze into that turn. She's got a lead of over two seconds now ahead of Lee, who's swimming well in lane four, but heat two is gonna go to Castillo. Yes, a good performance by Castillo. Castillo down there in lane number seven for Panama. Taking it out in second place. Swimmer from Guam, Lee, and then from Tonga Penube in third place in Kuwait four through Sultan. Maria Castillo. No entry time listed there. She was the only swimmer without the entry time. Normally that means they are placed in an outside lane and that's when they tend to surprise. Yeah, quick off the blocks there. At the bottom of the screen was Maria Castillo, the 19-year-old. Took the race out aggressively, down towards the finish, reaches out on a full stroke. The only swimmer to break one minute here this morning in heat two. Seven fifty-eight and sixty point three eight first and second in heat two. Heat three. Uh, the third of the heats then and uh, it is Daria Seminova of Turkmenistan in lane four alongside a Georgia Vile of Papua New Guinea Samoa with Brown in three and uh, Becky of Kosovo in lane number six as they've completed the first of four laps here and in that uh, bright pink I guess you'd call it pink but uh, in lane number four regardless Seminova setting the pace yeah, she was quick off the blocks and does lead it through the first 50 metres, 27.7. So similar to what we saw from Castillo in the previous heat. Having a good swim now above her, above those yellow lanes is Kaya Brown. Starting to challenge for that leading position and also Hannah Vicky in lane six. So it's going to be a three-ray race here to the finish. Seminova trying to hold on. The challenge coming from Brown as indicated. And also there, Becky of Kosovo might be uh, stronger than both of them. As they touch the wall, it was Becky. So a nicely timed race there by Becky. Brown in second, Seminova in third. And uh, the winning time here was, as we search for 59.03. 59.03 for Hannah Becky. Yeah, just 14 years of age. Finished the strongest across that last 25 metres. That was Seminova in that pink suit. Out fast through the first 50 metres or so. Down towards the finish. Becky down the bottom. Reaching out. Rotates onto the wall. Perfect finish for the 14-year-old. She gets rewarded with that good touch and takes out heat three. Three of them under the minute here. Becky, Brown and Seminova. Heat three of nine. Is the start list for the fourth heat then. Four and five. Edith Garden. Now Caldi. And as you'd expect, the times will continue to come down as we move through the heats. Uh, all but one of these swimmers with entry times inside the minute. And a really good start there for Elizabeth Timmer of uh, Aruba in lane seven. She's got an entry time of 58.78. Yeah, things certainly start to heat up. We've got Timmer in lane seven with an early lead. And Iceguard and Alcardi have got entry times of 56 seconds. So much quicker than what we've seen so far. 26.79 for Timmer. She's got an early lead. She 
you can see the field there, breathing to her right, having a good swim also is Torres in lane two in that blue cap, who looks to be almost in second, and those middle lanes are starting to move through. Timmer it is, who continues to lead. She's going to be hard to catch from here. Alcaldi in lane number five, and Edersgaard. Edersgaard's taken over second in four. They're starting to catch her, but they won't have enough time to do so. Timmer it is, who holds on. Edersgaard finishing hard, taking second, Alcaldi third. Yes, Elizabeth Timmer from Aruba. She's happy with that, 55.88. Three seconds quicker than her entry time. 20 run year old takes out heat four. Diving in, you can see a couple of different arm styles getting off the blocks. But as they entered the water, it was Timmer through the first 25 minutes. She got out to a lead and she held on. They were chasing her down, but towards the finish, she does take out heat four. In a time of 55.88, 56.21, as far as Edersgaard's concerned. Results of heat four. Fifth heat with Algeria and the Cayman Islands in the middle lanes. Latvia and South Africa in three and six. So the fastest entry time here is Amel Miela. She is uh, the most experienced swimmer in the field. In fact, she's the only one in the field born before the year 2000. Bobby, you're getting old. Oh, she's born in the 90s. What a veteran of the field. She's swimming out of lane four. A little bit behind at this point in the race. That's Gillian Cooks in lane five, swimming well. Also, Caitlin Deland in from South Africa. It will be a tie first through the split. Much quicker than the previous heat as well. 25.9 at the 50 metre mark. And Delgado in lane two, moving through the, the back half of this race. Crooks it is, who continues to lead for the Cayman Islands. She is uh, the youngest in the field here at 16 years of age. How she'd love to take it out. She's trying to hold on, but Delgado is finishing hard from Ecuador. And it's going to be Delgado who wins it in front of Crooks and then the South African DeLong in third place. She was brave, Crooks, but Annika Delgado proving too strong over the last 25 and winning in 54-19. All those times are really starting to come down now. 54-1 for Delgado. Did it all on that back end, that second 50 metres. So important to be accelerating into the finish. You don't want to be fading in these short course racing, especially through your legs. If you've gone out too hard, you can really seize up even in an event that lasts less than a minute. 54.19 and 54.20. So, gee, Crooks wasn't far away. One hundredth of a second. We're up to heat six. So this is the last of the unseeded heats now. We've got Bulgaria and Slovenia with Petkova and Klenka in lanes four and five. off the blocks there, the Cuban uh, Matos in lane number one here, the Cobra of Bulgaria I mentioned, Planka, and also Jeruna Dottir of Israel, who's the swimmer in six. Oh, they turn together, nothing separates them at the 25 metre mark. The swimmer's in the middle of the pool with entry times of 54, but wouldn't surprise me to see them go well under 54 seconds here in the last of the unseeded heats. And turning first, it's the swimmer from Iceland in lane six. She's got a narrow lead in that purple suit, but nothing separates the four in the middle of the pool. Lana Pudar as well, swimming in lane two, the butterfly specialist. It might be even over, turning first. No, that's, it's too tight to call. It's Gennaroma Dottir who continues to lead. Flanker in second. And that's the way they're going to finish. Third, it's going to be lane number three here, Ivanova, who led early. The swimmer from Slovakia, but Jaruna Dottir it is who is too good. And she records a time here at 53.21, so she is our winner. Good racing.
really good racing in the last of the unseeded heats. Yeah, she was able to accelerate again through that last 25 metres. Gerona de Tier, she takes out heat six. Again, well under 54, as we said. 53-2-1, fastest time of the morning so far. But we move into the three seated heats now. So in the 53s, the first two here. The sixth of the second separating first and second. That was heat six. And now some of the names we've become familiar with. In international swimming, the first of the seated heats. Coleman of Sweden, Wilson, Australia, Simonova of the Czech Republic. Taylor Ruck is in lane eight, the Canadian. Wilson, fresh from being a part of that world record breaking four by 100 freestyle relay team last night. Lane four. Cheng from China, Wu from China in six and seven. two Chinese swimmers, Wu, I was perhaps getting ahead of myself because uh, she's a non-starter in seven. So, Wilson and Simonova in those middle lanes, Michelle Coleman with an entry time 51.94 in lane number three and she'd be our leader at the moment. Also, lane one, Jubinik in Sweden. Yeah, Jubinik swam well yesterday in a few individual events and turning first it's going to be Taylor Ruck. The, uh, still only 22 years of age is Ruck. She's been inconsistent in the international scene over the past few years, but she had a great relay split last night, as did Maddie Wilson from Australia swimming in the middle of the pool. So in the first of the seeded heats, you want to be in one of the first finishers here. Ruck surprising everybody down there in eight, just starting to move back now. Simonova coming through. The swimmer from Czech Republic and Wilson leaving a run through the late. It will be Wilson. Gets her hand on the ball first, 52 4 3 in a tight finish ahead of Barbara Simonova and Taylor Ruck hanging on for the third place. Nice swim there for Wilson. There would have been plenty of excitement last night after that world record in the relay, the 4 by one relay. But Wilson's come out in good form this morning. Yeah, she's. Very experienced now is Wilson in individual and relay performances, especially in this 100 meter freestyle distance. Timed it to perfection. Narrow win there, but important nonetheless. Wilson ahead of Simonova, Ruck, and Coleman. Junovic in fifth. I will think it will take 52 seconds to make the semi finals tonight. Top 16 moving through. We're up to the second last of the heats here, Tori Husk. Also, Siobhan. Hohi in lane number four. Gastodello in five. So in lane number four, Hohi, she is the defending champion. It's the first time we've seen her in action at the championships. The silver medalist from Tokyo. Quickly away, though, Tori Husk, who is the bronze medalist of the Budapest World Championships. Yeah, Husk flying off the blocks as we're used to seeing her. Hohi just got left on there a little bit. She's the 200 freestyle world record holder in the short course pool. So you know she's going to be strong through the back half of this one. And she does overcome that poor start and turns first in 24-6. So Hohi in the middle of the pool. Gassadello, the French woman, swimming there in the bottom of the yellow lanes. And Tori Husk just sitting off that shoulder of Hohi. It's a race between that trio. This is uh, the second last of the heats and a good turn there from Hohi. She is in front, going with it. Husk on her left and Gastadello. And they will finish in that order. Hohi it is from Husk and Gastadello. Heat number eight. And that winning time, 52.04. Yeah, does enough to take out heat eight there, 52 0. You can see here on the replay, last off the blocks in the middle of the pool there, Hohi was able to overcome that at turn first at the 50, but put a lot of energy into that first two laps before controlling the finish here. Nice and long onto that wall. 
a host of 52 second swims there. So it's not overly fast this morning for the women. 52.04 and 52.34, so it ended up being a third of a second, separating the first and second place getters. One heat remaining. Emma McKeon, after a wonderful relay split last night in lane four here, alongside Katarina Vasik of Poland, Steenberg and Hopkins as well, and three and six. back in the water what a swim it was last night she is the olympic champion in fact she won the sprint double the 50 and the 100 and she is going to be the hot favorite here yeah certainly she's going to get through these heats and as we mentioned it's a late finish last night after that relay the swimmers having to back up again this morning and race again and again and again so mckeon there in that yellow cap 24 8 splits ahead of Katarina Wasik, the swimmer from Poland, 30 years of age. She's starting to find some of her best form, but we know that McKeon is just such a great racer and she would have just memorized how to swim these short course 50 and 100 meter events. She's got a narrow lead. She'll want to try and win this heat and she looks like she's going to do that comfortably. She's uh, looking very comfortable indeed. She knows who's on her left, who's on her right. And she probably knows the time as well. It's 52.23. It's not the fastest of the times. Dead heat there for first. In fact, Steenberg and flying home to match McKeon. 52.23 on that touch. Five, results are official, so really strong finish there. Here they come at the end, Steenbergen on the left in that black cap. McKeon just relaxed onto the wall. It's not so important through the heats, but good finish nonetheless for Marit Steenbergen to tie with the Olympic champion in heat eight, heat nine, sorry, to conclude the women's 100 freestyle this morning. So 52-23 for both Steenbergen and McKeon. Vasik, 33 hundredths of a second back in third placing. To put that into perspective, McKeon split 49.9 on the relay last night. That's the way it uh, looks going through to the semi-finals. Jorge, Steenbergen, McKeon, Castadello, Wilson all making it through. Uh, the 16th uh, time there, 53.32 with uh, Baldacini of Brazil. So she makes it through. And uh, 53.38 for Igarashi is uh, not good enough. So she is going to be the first reserve waiting on a scratching. Yeah, Gerona Tsur from Iceland qualifying for the semi finals out of an unseated heat. So. Great performance for her, the 22-year-old, and that finals shorter heat up. Semi-finals tonight, sorry, before the finals. I'm looking forward to seeing if McKeon can challenge that world record from her Australian teammate Kate Campbell back in 2017, and, and also seeing if Siobhan Hawkey can defend her title and give Emma McKeon a run for her money. So two real standout swimmers in that women's 100 free. The next event is uh, the men's 100 metres freestyle. Heats here. We will see Kyle Chalmers in action, our world record holder. He's set at that time of 44.84 uh, in 2021. So he will be in the last of the heats here, heat number 11. There's the field for the first of the heats. Swimmers wow. from all corners of the globe involved here. So it's 
against uh, Nigeria and also the Marshall Islands in lane four and five. Swimmer from Cameroon, a scratching from three in uh, lane four of Puti, Clinton of Puti with an entry time 60.02. Yeah, be good to see him get under that one minute mark and they look to be moving at a fast speed so far through heat number one. It's a Puti in the middle of the pool, turning first in lane one. It's going to be Abu Garbea turning in uh, at split time, 25.11. So they're well on track to go under a minute. They're scattered around the pool. Lane one leads from lane four. The swimmer from Palestine in front. In uh, second place, a Puti of Nigeria. It's a margin of around about uh, a full body length there. And uh, Abu Gabaya it is, who takes it out. In second place, a Puti. And uh, third home, it is uh, going to be Shrista of Nepal. Nice swim from him in lane number two. Yeah. Yeah, the top three swimmers there. Well, under the one minute mark, Abu Gabaya, the 16 year old. We saw him race well. The long course world champs and getting good experience here racing at this level in Melbourne. Takes out the first heat in convincing fashion. Off the blocks there. Again, lots of different diving styles, especially when it comes to getting their arms into streamline before they hit the water. And Mahmoud Abu Gabea gets the victory there. A little bit of a grimace. No entry time, so potentially he wanted to go a little bit faster. 52, 53, 55, and 56 around those marks for first, second, third, and fourth in the first of 11 heats. Moving along to heat two with Barbados and Gibraltar represented in four and five here. Chiato and Savitz. So, Chiato in uh, lane number four here. He's an 18 year old from Barbados with an entry time 55 37. He's in the yellow cap and he's our early leader in second place as they go through the first 25. Savage and then from Papua New Guinea in lane six at Tarare. Yeah, much more even racing here in heat two. It might be Savage in between those two swimmers in yellow caps. He does turn first in 25.4. Swimming in lane five there in the black cap, just almost bounces every time he breathes, lifts his head really high, and you can see moving through now, that's the fastest seed here. Chiato in lane four, starting to take over, but that was a good turn from Savitz. He tries to put his head down a little bit. He's got a monster kick behind him, and in lane five, it's going to be Savitz into the touch, taking out heat two, 53-37. So it's two seconds quicker than his entry time. Swimmer from Gibraltar. So, a good swim by Matt Savage. He was strong off the wall with that last turn, just as he was uh, being challenged. It seems as if uh, Chiato from Barbados, at this point, Chiato had, uh, was right in it, but it was uh, a good, strong push off the wall by Savage. Yeah, he's a much bigger swimmer than his counterpart there, the 23 year old. Powerful finish, powerful last turn. Those skills are so important. And he does take out heat two. There is the official result. All of them well and truly under the minute here as the times continue to fall. Heat three. Colin Salaboko, 18 year old from Tanzania in lane four. He's in four, and uh, you've got Tonga with Aufi in lane number five, and they're flanked by swimmers from Benin and the Northern Mariana Islands, where it's uh, Jonasuki Suzuki in lane six. Yeah, it's Buja turning first at the 25. You can hear his hands slapping the water through our sound effects down there. Swimming closest to screen. He's first at the moment, but it's a loud hand entry for Muja, 24.59. With that sort of style, we do see the swimmer's fatigue, and he does fall back to the field now as Saliboko moves through in lane four. Strong third 25. He takes it by just a few one hundredths of a second. So
So lane eight hanging on, but Salabuco striding out nicely in the middle of the pool. He should win it. A nice swim there from uh, the swimmer in lane two as well. That's Al Hassani of uh, Iraq. He takes second. It was Salabuco who was too strong. Muja was uh, back in third placing the swimmer from Kosovo in lane number eight. Winning time here, 51.50. Yeah, great swim from the 19-year-old. Paced it nicely. Goes much faster than his entry time. And looked good doing that as well. That smooth, long freestyle stroke. Here he is at the finish. He's all out on his own in the middle of the pool. Gets a good touch on the wall. Shake of the head. He's pretty impressed with himself there. 51.5. And he can see it on the results as well. 51.5, 51.96 for Al Hassani swimming out of lane two. And Muja from eight, 52.28. We're up to the fourth heat now. Guiana and Uman in the middle lanes here. Leon Seaton and uh, Hamid Aladawi. Quickly off the blocks there was uh, the swimmer in lane number three from Panama. That was Calderon alongside Seaton. And uh, Calderon, our early leader, in lane number five. Aladawi as well. Yeah, entry times are 51 seconds, and I'm sure these guys will want to start to challenge the 50 second mark. And moving through in lane one, Vasquez got away nicely out of that first turn. He does turn first in 23.8. He's the most impressive coming out of these walls, using a great underwater streamline to just accelerate into the lead. But in the middle now, that's uh, Aladawi and Seaton trying to catch up to the leader, but it's still Vasquez in one. Yes, Vasquez, uh, terrific swim by him. Also uh, down there in lane six, as you mentioned, Abyss. And they will finish in that order. Vasquez, it is. The swimmer from Syria in second place, Abbas, as I mentioned. 49.77. So that's the first time we've seen a sub-50 swim. Yeah, first sub-50 of the morning. And no doubt the first time in his career, that's a personal best for the 22-year-old Miguel Vasquez. Didn't stand out through that first 25 metres, but really accelerated off all three turns there, using that to his advantage on the left of screen. And he's pumped to get a 49.77 result. Taking out heat four. 49, 77, 50.01. So Abbas was very close to breaking 50 as well. He finished second. Heat five. Heat five. The Bahamas and the Cook Islands in the middle lanes. Andorra and Bosnia and Herzegovina in three and six. Even start there. Taylor of the, the Bahamas in lane number four with an entry time 50.25, and he's away really quickly now as he completes the first 25. Yeah, well out in front is the 19 year old from the Bahamas. Powerful start, and look at that first wall as well. He's got a body length here before they even get to the 50 meter mark. We'll have a look at this split. He turns in 22.49. His entry time is 50.2, but He's on track to go around 47 high, maybe even 48 seconds this morning in Heat 5. So Lamar Taylor, we'll see if he can hold this form through that last 25 metres. The chasing team, they haven't taken any ground off him, and he's still holding that straight arm technique into the finish. He was quick off the blocks, and he hasn't slowed down at all, and he stops the clock here at 47.76. So you wonder about that entry time. Probably long course. 47.76 for Taylor. Terrific effort by him. Oh, great swim. The 19-year-old from the Bahamas claims that one in front of the crowd. Significantly quicker than what we've seen so far this morning, and that will put him in the mix to qualify for the semi-finals potentially. Still with about six heats to go. So it's the standout performance so far in this men's 100 freestyle. Lamar Taylor. 
Showing great speed. Looking forward to watching him we'll swim the 50 freestyle later at these championships as well. So there we have those results. Heat five, we're just about halfway through the men's 100 metres freestyle. Chiruti, the swimmer in lane number four here. Main danger uh, not starting here. Lane five empty, and uh, look down there in lane number six, Jordan Crooks of the Cayman Islands. A big start by him. Also in lane number three, it's Dusa of Slova Slovakia. Yeah, Crooks now training in the US in the college system, and look how good he is coming out of these walls. He's got a big lead there. He's a tall swimmer turning at 21.7, staying underwater as well. He's absolutely flying. That's a great halfway split. He might be looking at something in the 46 seconds. So things are really starting to heat up in heat six of this men's 100 free. It's Crooks with a big lead ahead of the swimmer below him in seven. But this one's going to go to Crooks. It'll go to Crooks, all right. The question is the time, and the time is oh. excellent. How about that? Wow. 45 61. This is an unseated heat. It's 0.8 off the world record for Jordan Crooks, the 19 year old from the Cayman Islands. 45-6, not showing any emotion there, keeping a poker face. He'll be in the semis tonight, don't worry about that. And that was more impressive than I thought it was going to be at the halfway point. He's been impressive at international level over the past few years, still only very young, but we saw his 16-year-old sister race in the women's 100 free, and Jordan Crooks now swims in the United States, and he's just carried that form over and getting a high level of training, posting a world-class time this morning to take out Heat 6. From the Cayman Islands, Jordan Crooks with that uh, world-class time, 45-61. Nankov it was from Bulgaria, taking second, Dusa, Slovakia third. Heat 7. Getting close to the seeded heats. This is Heat 7 of 11, Hunter Armstrong, the USA in lane four. From South Africa in lane five. Take your marks. Armstrong in lane number four. Jimmy, I mentioned. Pocken it is from Paraguay in three. And Gratchik of the Czech Republic. And a good start here by the American. Yeah, he's in the unseated heat. It's a bit of long course time, but. Hunter Armstrong has confessed that he's not the strongest short course swimmer. He's the world record holder in the long course 50 backstroke, but he missed the semi-finals in the 100 back yesterday. Just got caught up on that turn there, did Armstrong. Jammed up on the wall. The swimmer in one having a really good swim from Spain. That's Dechelis Montebalan, who's got a solid lead at the 75 meter mark. Armstrong's back in third. And Ruslan Gazayev from Canada also swimming well down the bottom of the pool. On top of the who's going to take it out. Now going through in lane four. A good finish there by Armstrong. He wouldn't be entirely happy with the race, but uh, he was able to get up there and uh, take second place in 46.8. 46.8. So it's uh, what, a second slower than we saw Jordan Crooks in the previous. Yeah, there is on the left of screen to tell us what's Ballon. A little short on that finish, but Armstrong just got caught up on a few of those turns. Swimmer from Spain gets the victory in heat seven over Armstrong and Gazaev. And he gives a thumbs up for a personal best time here in Melbourne. Forty-six point eight that winning time for the Spaniard. Armstrong 47-11 and 47-3 for Gasayev of Canada. Now the last of the unseeded heats with Tom Dean of Great Britain in lane two here. Wow, we're not even up to the seeded heats. No. Not the quickest off the blocks there. The 200 champion from the Tokyo Olympic Games is in the red cap 
two from top of screen. Down there in the red cap in lane number five, it's Mugniak of Croatia, who started well, and Barris of Great Britain, the second Britain six. Yeah, a lot of red caps in this one. It's the two British swimmers out in front. That's Barris in six, Tom Dean in two. Watch for Dean to move through the back half of this race, and Milenic in lane five. The Croatian also swimming well, so... The battle in the red caps, Lewis Burris with that straight arm stroke, more of a 50 metre specialist, and his teammate Tom Dean at the top of the screen is the 200 metre specialist. So Dean starting to take over. Dean is on top with a few strokes to go. It's going to be Great Britain first and second. Burris finishing in second. Dean taking it out. So he gets the cop roots out with a nice uh, morning swim here, and he wins it in 46.54. You go back to that time by Jordan Crooks. Yeah, it's so how good up, that is. It? We've got uh, we've got about four or five swimmers under 47 already, with still three seated heats to go. So things really heating up in this men's hundred freestyle. Tom Dean, he's entered in long course times all week. 46.5. That should make him uh, get him through to the semis. He'll be one of the favourites in the 200 metre distance. So just getting his program warmed up here in Melbourne with the 100 freestyle and he takes out Heat 8. And there are the results of Heat 8 as well. Dean from Barris, Great Britain 1 and 2. So the first of the seeded heats now. And Rousseau of France in 4. Wang of Korea in 5. Popovich in lane 6. This is what we've been waiting for. David Popovich, the world record holder in the long course, the world champion from Budapest, lane six. So the youngster from Romania, all eyes on lane six here. What can he do? Quick start in lane seven, though, Ostrovsky of Poland. Yeah, Popovich in six. It's his first time ever racing in Australia in his first race of these World Championships. Beaten off the start, just doesn't have the power to match the strength of Maxime Brousseau there, the Frenchman in four. Out with an early lead, that's Wang from Korea in five as well. 200 metre world champion from last year. But watch for Popovich, he should be able to move through the back after this swim. There is three from the bottom. It's Brousseau getting chased down by Wang and Popovich. Yes, Popovich moving up to equal second. Now, Brousseau seems to have this under control. Popovich maybe with his nose in front for second. And uh, that should be the way they finish. Brousseau, Popovich, the way in one, two, three. In the first of the seed of this, Maxim Brousseau, the silver medalist from the World Championships, taking out the nine. Yeah, strong swim from Brousseau. It's the second 45. Second swim we've seen this morning. Popovich there, racing home for second. He had to work hard for that, just unable to match them off the start. And coming off those turns just doesn't have the strength and the maturity at this point. Still only 18. He needs the more the longer distance swimming to be able to chase them down. But really put impressive performance from Brousseau, an underrated sprinter on the world stage. 45-77, that's the second quickest time. Jordan Crook still with the quickest. Two heats remaining. Heat 10 now, Alessandro Moresi, part of that world record breaking 4x100 freestyle relay team last night. He's in 4. Messi and Pan in four and five, Santos and Gigler, Brazil and Austria in three and six, and look at Marissi go, he's not uh, suffering any hangover from last night, he is in brilliant form this morning. Yeah, he's the defending champion from Abu Dhabi, and fresh off a world record in the relay last night, as you mentioned, turns first in 2204. Gigler not too far behind him, two lanes down the bottom in that blue cap of Austria. They look like they've got a little bit of gap over Pan in the middle of them. The 
Chinese swimmer sitting in about third place, but Moresi, he looks strong, doesn't he? Yes, the Italian. He's the defending champion here, Alessandro Moresi. And uh, he stakes his claim in the heats this morning in a time of 46.22. 46.22. So that was uh, half a second slower than Rousseau in the previous. But he takes out heat number 10. Yes, a little bit disappointed there. He's, that's his third swim of the championships. He led off the relay yesterday in the heat in the, in the final wasn't able to get under 46 seconds so he's been consistently at 46 low it looked like he really pushed hard there he won the world title in Abu Dhabi last year swimming 45.5 so he's not quite yet in his best form Alessandro Moresi but he's got the semis and finals still to come to get there 46.22 Moresi Giggler Pan Temple as well from Australia getting under 47 seconds So the final heat now, Kyle Chalmers in lane number four here. The winner of the gold medal at the Rio Olympics, silver medalist in Tokyo. And he is the world record holder in this short course event. Slow off the blocks here. Check on the Italian alongside him in lane number five. He's away well. Also, they're in one Ramadama venue. Yeah, Chalmers, his first individual race of the Melbourne World Champs. He had the fastest split of the field last night in that men's relay to anchor the Australian team to silver. He's just sitting in about third position right now as Yusuf Ramadan has flown out in 21.96. The Egyptian in lane one out early. That was a good turn from Chalmers. He gets over the top of Chechon. Check on. And you can see Ramadan over there on his right. As they turn for the last time and Chalmers is getting stronger, he's always got a big finish here. He's taken over the lead in lane number four, the world record holder. And he is going to record a smart time here at 45.84. 45.84. And he takes out the last of the heats. Check on in second place. 45.8, well controlled there from the world record holder. It's about one second over the time he posted last year in Kazan to break the world record. 44.84 he went on that occasion. So a well controlled swim from Chalmers. So experienced now at this point of his career. And of course, a tough racer. Loves the challenge. And he's going to get plenty of challenge here in Melbourne with what we saw from Miresi Grusso. And of course, the fastest qualifier of the morning, Jordan Crooks from the Cayman Islands. So Chalmers gets uh, one race out of the way. He was, of course, part of that relay team that took the silver medal last night with another flying anchor leg. Just uh, waiting for this result to become official. Kyle Chalmers, the favourite. He was in excellent form in the FINA World Cup circuit. He won all three 100 metres freestyle races, but now he's just waiting, waiting, waiting for this result to be confirmed. He'll uh, no doubt drop his times in the semi-final and you would imagine ultimately the final as well. Yeah, unusual to see what they're looking for in a freestyle race here. They don't go over 15 metres underwater and there's really nothing else to be disqualified for except the false start, so they're a bit nervous. Could it be a problem? Well, maybe, well, he was slow off the block, so I don't think it, it would involve Chalmers. But it could be a problem with the touch pads. We've got all clear. I mentioned slow off the blocks. There he was last off the blocks. We do have all clear, though, so uh, Chalmers can uh, safely start to think about what is coming up next. 45.84. Check on. 46.41, 46.51 for Ramadan. He led at the halfway. Right, uh, let's have a look at uh, how they will go through and Jordan Crooks, what a magnificent performance by this 20 year old from the Cayman Islands. The quickest through to the semis. Quite remarkable. Rousseau second quickest. Time down there 47.03 for Schroeders. He goes through. Yeah, amazing swim overall there. Tom Dean also making it. Lewis Burris, so the Great Britain duo qualifying. The two Americans miss Kibler and Armstrong outside the top 16 that's big news 
after they got the bronze medal last night in the men's relay, but what a performance from Crooks. Still only 19. We've got to try and find some more information about this impressive swimmer. We've seen him in, uh, in Budapest and Abu Dhabi last year, just slowly moving up the ranks, and now he finds himself as the fastest qualified for the semis. Still a long way to go, but if he can keep producing that 45 mid-swim or even improve on that, then he's a threat for a medal and maybe even a gold medal as well. Eighty-four starters in that men's hundred freestyle. Now we move on to the women's one hundred meter breaststroke. That world record, equal world record from Ali Atkinson and Ruta Melutite, 102.36. We will see Melutite back in the water again after a brief retirement. She will be racing in the latter heats here this morning. Heat one. Heat one, we've got the swimmers in the middle of the pool. That's Batalones in four and Toure in five. Mariama Toure in five and Bataru Toure swimming in lane two and also away well in lane three. Amadou Yusufo swimming nicely here through the first heat. But up the top of screen, it's Tara Vok swimming in lane one. The swimmer from Slovenia with no entry time. She's out aggressively through this first 50 metres. And she leads by a fair old margin as well. So that uh, distance, what in terms of times, one and three quarters seconds. So they are spread across the pool there. Vok it is in front from Slovenia. And uh, from Macau, Chen holding down second place. Is, uh, they've got geez, they're spread right out. This is only a hundred metres breaststroke. And they're up and down both ends of the pool at the moment. That's how the times vary sometimes in the early heats. But no doubt about our leader here, this 22-year-old uh, from Slovenia, Tara Bok, and she records a time here, 106.29. 106.29, she comfortably takes it out. Swimmer from the Cow Chen in second, and it was Aurora in third place. The swimmer from India in lane number six. Winner from lane one, second in lane... Between first and second. The second of the heats now. Sri Lanka in the Bahamas, four and five. In fact, we look down no four. And quickly off the blocks there in uh, lanes two and three, Dashti and Grompier of Kuwait and Haiti, respectively. And uh, in lane number one, it's Jayla Pinner. Jayla Pinner, who would be our early leader at the moment. Down to lane number five, it's Victoria Russell of the Bahamas. And uh, they would be 
first and second at the moment. Also the uh, swimmer from Palestine, that's Abu in lane number six. So this is much more even racing than we saw in the previous heat. Uh, heat number two, and they get down now to the halfway point. And it's still the swimmer up there in lane number one. That is Jayla Pinner. Yeah, only 18 years of age. She leads through the 50 metre mark. Even racing, as you said, swimmers in lanes four and five with entry times of 1.14 and the rest of the field with 1.15 entry times. So they're well on track to eclipse that this morning. Victoria Russell now in lane five turns first at the 75 metre mark and she looks really strong through this last lap. Russell, the 22-year-old with an entry time, 1.14.97, taking over from Pinner from Cape Verde. And uh, that is the order they finish. So 1.11.56, uh, Pinner in second, and uh, third home in the end was Kent. Victoria Russell. Moving too strong for the 18-year-old Pinner. Yeah, really happy with that this morning is Russell. Palmer's getting another heat win. Only 18, uh, only 22 years of age. Goes three seconds quicker than her entry time, and she did it all on that second 50. Really strong back end there, so no doubt she's going to be racing the 200 metre distance here in Melbourne, still to come later at these championships. And, uh, and she'll also race the 50 metres here, in fact, so she gets to swim. The breaststroke triple in Melbourne. And just waiting for those results. Yes, they are official now. Yes, and they're all clear as well. 1.11.56, the winning time there for Victoria Russell in the second of seven heats of the women's 100 list. Heat three with Colombia and Korea in the yellow lanes there. Gomez, Hurtado and Moon. Away here. Do you remember the Beijing Olympics, Bobby? Yes. Well, Moon of Korea wasn't born then. Doesn't seem all that long ago, but Moon in lane number five, a 108.5 entry time here. And Gomez Hurtado in lane number four. They both show out early. Alongside is uh, Chelan Siva of Kazakhstan in lane number three. And right up there in lane one again, showing out Connolly of the Cook Islands. So a good race this as they get down to the halfway point. It is the youngster, the 14-year-old Sao Moon in front. Yes, I remember watching her in, in Budapest a few months ago at 13. I'm not sure she might have actually made a semi-final at those World Championships. Definitely a swimmer to watch over the next five to ten years, in fact. So Sua Moon from Korea. The, the women's breaststroke is an event where you can see these young teenagers get quite successful quickly, like we saw from Mel Utite winning the Olympics at 15 years of age. So Moon slightly ahead, the swimmer from the Philippines chasing her down. It's going to be Moon ahead of Dela Cruz. 106.96 for the 14-year-old out of the unseeded heats as well. Great swim there. Always improving is Sua Moon. I think that she's already competed now at two world championships at 14 years of age. Sua Moon, and uh, she's got no doubt Fukuoka and uh, probably Doha yet to come as well. So by the time she does get to the world, cha the uh, Olympics in Paris, she will have competed in four or five worlds. She'll be 16 years of age. Yeah, she's not making up the numbers here either. Not in Melbourne and certainly not in Paris. She's on the rise. Sua Moon, 106.96. Dela Cruz in second. Connolly from the Cook Islands touching third. Four. Up to the last of the unseeded heats now. Clark of Great Britain in lane number four. And then we've got Fomal of Sweden in five. Nicole of Canada in six. Marks. 
away they go. The red cap there for Great Britain. That is Clark in lane number four with an entry time of 105.61. She gets off the blocks quickly and she's going to establish a nice little lead as she gets to the first 25. Yeah, that was a really athletic start there from Imogen Clark. She takes the lead over the first 25. You can see stroking at a much higher stroke rate or a higher frequency than that of Thormarm from Sweden below her. So Clark taking it out fast, 30.12. She's got about half a second lead over the swimmer from Sweden. She's got a longer stroke, so a much more efficient style. We'll see if Walt Thormarm can come back through this back end of the women's 100 breaststroke. Clark it is who continues to lead in the second place, Thormarm. And then we go back to Sibelis of Argentina. Swimming out of lane seven, she's not far away. In fact, she's challenging for second at the moment. They won't catch Clark. Clark is going to uh, hold on and win by about half a body length here in lane number four, big four. And a uh, nice swim it was by her. So she records a time of 105.05, and that's half a second inside her time. Yeah, great swim there from the 23-year-old Imogen Clark takes about 0.5 of a second off her entry time. And as I mentioned, really athletic start off the block and had a high frequency with her stroke rate. So it was an all-out sprint for Imogen Clark this morning. Really has a wide pull, squeezes those elbows in nice and tight on the recovery. And gets her hands on the wall first. Fastest swim of the morning so far. And all clear after some delay with those results coming through. Clark it is who takes it out from Argentina Sabalas in second place and uh, for Mal of Sweden third. Peak five brings the seeded swimmers to the fore. Lily King, the bronze medalist from the Tokyo Olympics in lane four for the USA. First time we've seen King here at the World Championships. Also the Commonwealth Games champion, Lara Van Niekerk of South Africa. She's in lane six, but King is away nicely. Yeah, Van Niekerk in six can't be discounted as well. Had a breakout long course season this year in Budapest and Birmingham. But it's Lily King in that white cap for the United States, the Olympic champion from Rio in 2016. She's trying to regain that form again. She used to hold the world record in the long course, or she still holds the world record in the long course 100 breaststroke, and she's always a tough racer and tough to beat. So King's in four, starting to move now. Up now is Anna Lent in five, starting the challenge. Here's the swimmer from Germany moving through, and Niekirk, as we mentioned as well. Niekirk touches first at the 75. So the South African in front, Lily King had led until just before they touch the wall, now she's got to respond. She is responding and going with a shooting in lane number three. King, Van Niekirk, I reckon, has held on. Van Niekirk winning it from King and shooting with a lead there in fourth placing. Lara Van Niekirk, the Commonwealth Games champion from Birmingham. The Commonwealth Games were held just weeks after the Budapest World Championships. And Van Niekirk taking her form from Budapest to Birmingham and now to Melbourne. Yeah, normally a 50-metre swimmer is Van Niekirk. She really just held herself back through the first 50 and moved through right here down the third lap. This is coming into that 75-metre turn, and on the finish, only a hundredth separated them. Van Niekirk on the right, King there on the left of screen, both in the white caps, matching 103.9s, but Van Niekirk on the touch ahead of King. Schutten flew home as well, and Alan Elent, Anna Elent, sorry. So heat six now, the second last of the heats with Tang of China, Aoki of Japan in four and five. Tang is the defending champion. Tang, the defending champion I mentioned. Uh, Pilato in lane three is the long course champion from Budapest. She takes a while emerging. Uh, first to show out is Tang alongside her in lane number five, Aoki of Japan. Yeah, Tang, the winner from Abu Dhabi 12 months ago. 
103.1, she swam on that occasion. Only 18 years of age now. And she's uh, swimming in the middle of a pool in that green suit. Just getting challenged from Riona Aoki, the Japanese swimmer in five. They've cleared out well in front. Here's Tanga Naoki down the bottom of the pool. Jenna Stross from Australia swimming strongly as well. But here comes Tang, the Chinese swimmer, starting to get on top. 18 years of age, Tang Ching Twing of uh, China, our defending champion. Yeah. Aoki from Japan alongside her. Good pull out off the wall there for Tang. She's about a body length in front. The field starting to come at them now in lane two. That's Fukasawa Pilatos, a fair way back in the field, down to the touch. 407 for Tang. She gets the heat win ahead of Fukasawa and Aoki. So Japan touching second and third. We've got uh, Lundsberg from Denmark in fourth, and well back was Pilato. Annie Laser from the United States back in seven. So, Tang giving herself a, a chance of uh, defending, successfully defending the crown that she won 12 months ago. Yes, the surprise was Laser, really, the American. Here's the result, Tang, Fukasawa and Aoki, Japan two and three behind China. And the last of the heats here, heat seven, featuring the world record holder, bronze medalist from the Budapest World Championships, Gutemilia Tite, Sophie Hansen of Sweden in lane number five. Vacant lane is uh, lane three, but Melia Tite in four and Hanson five. The big guns are there. And also Chelsea Hodges, bronze medalist from the Commonwealth Games in lane six. Melia Tite, though, she's, she's remarkably still only 25 years of age and she has been winning on the international scene in, but on either side of uh, a brief retirement for about 10 years. Yeah, she broke out in London 2012 to win the Olympic gold medal as a 15-year-old. She strokes out nicely, just over world record pace, her own world record from nine years ago in 2013. So she's back in fine form, looks really fit and strong behind the blocks. And that's when we know Melia Tite is at her best when she flies off the blocks with her trademark fast start. She's got a big lead over Hansen, the silver medalist from Abu Dhabi last year, and she's in cruise control now, Melia Tite. Well, she can afford to ease up now if she chooses to. A couple of strokes to go, and Melia Tite will uh, safely advance through the heats to the semi finals. Melia Tite taking it out impressively. Hansen in second place. 103.81 for the swimmer from Lithuania. Yeah, that was relaxed, that last 20 metres in the wall. This is the start. It's only a few hundreds in it, but you can see how noticeable that is off the blocks on those slow motion replays. Meli Tite, there's none quicker off the blocks than her. And she got off to a rocketing first 25 metres, opened up a big lead in the front half of this race so that she could just relax those last five or six strokes into the wall. It's the fastest time of the morning. Yes, she won uh, all the 50 and 100 metre breaststroke events at the World Cup. She wins here in 103.81. Melia Tite, Hansen, 104.61. So Amelia Tito with the quickest of the times going through to the semi-finals. The top 16 making it through. Van Niekerk, good swim by her. Lily King will be a presence as well. Sophie Hansen second in that last heat. Ninth overall. Yang with a time of 105.28. Equal 15, but uh, no swim-off required. Jenna Schrosch of Australia, first reserve with 105.3. Our next event is event number 16, the mid-100 
The men's 100 metres backstroke will follow here. Uh, world record set last year, 55.28. So this is the first of eight heats ahead of us. And uh, Iraq and Nepal will have representatives in four and five here. So it's uh, Mali, Sa Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Nepal and Burundi represented here. Al Hassani and Kumul in four and five. The quickest of the entry times by some margin, a 107.98 for Al Hassani. Uh, but quickest through the first 25 is uh, across there in lane number two, and that's Kuma. Yeah, it is Kuma out first. No entry time for the 25-year-old. So we do often see these swimmers with no entry times in the early heats cause a bit of a surprise and and go uh, and go quick. So we're seeing that from Sebastian Kumar there, turning first by about two body lengths. And in the middle of the pool, that's Al Hassani and Kumal in a good race for second. Al Mayak just falling back a little bit in his, uh, he's been busy here in Melbourne with multiple events, but at the moment, the leader, the winner of this heat, it's gonna be Sebastian Kumar. We'll wait and see what sort of time he can post. Swimmer from Mali, 25-year-old, and he records a time of 104.39. 104.39, and uh, he led it from the start. Never challenged. Al Hassani finishing in second place. Yeah, he takes it there in the first of eight heats. Puma, pretty even off the blocks. The swimmers, they're allowed one breaststroke pull out so they can pull down with their arms. They're allowed one dolphin kick underwater. No more than one, though, before surfacing and getting into their stroke. And as we saw in Abu Dhabi, these men's sprint breaststroke events, quite often they are under review to check that the swimmers are only doing one dolphin kick underwater and, and also to make sure that it's a legal finish, two-hand breaststroke finish. It's all clear. Uh, Kuma, 104.39, uh, about two and a half seconds in front of Al Hassani and Kumul back in third for Nepal. Heat one. Second of the heats here. Zimbabwe and Madagascar represented through Liam Rahara and Jonathan Rahavel, respectively. off the blocks there was uh, Brandon Schuster of Samoa in lane one so we'll keep an eye on him he's a regular on the international uh, world championship circuit and also down there in lane number six it's Al Tramoon of Kuwait who's begun beautifully yeah pretty even in the middle of the pool Schuster is said flew off the blocks but moving through now in six is Al Tramoon from Kuwait swimming nicely there he's gonna touch slightly behind Kai from Chinese Taipei in lane three. So they're out quick, 28 seconds. They're entered in 102s. Most of the field have that entry time of 102. And it's Kai that's starting to be dominant here across that third 25. He takes the lead out of the last turn. In the white cap, it's lane three over lane six, Al Tarun. And Aldermoon's finishing the better. Oh, it's on the touch. It's awfully close. Kai it was from Aldermoon. There won't be much in it when uh, we see the times. Mahara and Rahavel, third and fourth, respectively. 1 0 1 6, the winning time there. Yeah, just over that one minute barrier. It's much quicker than his entry time of 102.75. That might have been a long course entry. He's uh, almost three seconds quicker. And uh, 
There he was there, third from the top in the white cap on the left of screen now. Kai Bing Rong, not much in at six one hundredths of a second, getting the touch over Rashid Altramoum. The official results there of heat two, six one hundredths of a second. In fact, 15, uh, no, one minute, uh, 1.15 seconds separating the top three, 1.15. As the start was for the third of our heats with Daniel Bobrovs of Latvia and Jonathan Cook of the Philippines in four and five here. Keylock of South Africa in six. the blocks there in lane one that's a suburb of Bulgaria Grand Pierre alongside him from Haiti also starting nicely in two and down in lane number seven it's a Wandanar of Namibia yeah flying off in lane one is Sabev he's got a big lead through that first 25 so the swimmer from Bulgaria really taking this out aggressively almost a body length clear down the opposite end of the pool that's Adrian Robinson in second place but it's uh, Sabev turning quick in 27.45 seconds. We'll see if he can hold this pace. Making a strong move now in lane five is Jonathan Cook. But it's a huge lead for Sabev. Yes, a 101.39. Interesting to see what time he ends up posting here. But, uh, it'll be well inside that, this 20-year-old. In fact, he turned 20 yesterday with uh, Tomislav Sabev. And he's celebrating here with an excellent heat swim in 58-58. And it was uh, Wontmar in second place. And third was taken by Kilo. Yeah, well under the one-minute mark there for Tomislav Sebev. Out fast, just faded a little bit on that last 25 metres. But showed great speed off the blocks. And through that first 50 metres, no doubt he'll be looking forward to that 50-metre sprint breaststroke still to come at these championships. Underwater there, they're allowed to pull down a dolphin kick before bringing those arms up to get into their stroke. And as we've seen, and moving into the seated heats now, there'll be plenty of video reviews to make sure everything's legal with that pull out and also the finish on the wall. The only swimmer under the minute there, 58-58 for Sabeb from lane one, representing Bulgaria. So up to the fourth of the heats now with Honduras and Slovakia represented in four and five. Dugasov of Canada in three. Even start here, Dergasov I mentioned, uh, Harigo of Honduras, Palace of Slovakia. Now uh, Elkamos has had a couple of swims already, he's swimming out of lane six and a big start there, Gilbert of New Zealand in seven. Yeah, quick off the blocks was Josh Gilbert and powerful through that first 25, he turns first at the 25 metre mark but a real even field here in heat four, it might be Gilbert at the 50. Takes him a few strokes to get into his into his stroke and find his rhythm. 26.99 at the split. They catch him a little bit off the turn, but he really built in well leading into the walls. There you can see just pulls away that last three or four strokes into the turn. He's got a lead of 0.6 of a second over the Canadian in three, and we'll see if Josh Gilbert can finish this one off. Yeah, starting to come at him now. Gilbert hanging on. Lane three, it is Dugasov of Canada, who's finishing very strongly. It's going to be Gilbert, though. Gilbert wins it. Dugasov in second place. And uh, it was Valdez who started well. In lane one from Colombia, three in third spot. 58.06. Yeah. He's happy with that, Josh Gilbert. This pump there. The New Zealand is off to a strong start at these World Championships. Flying off the blocks in lane seven, backing up the performances from Erica Fairweather we saw yesterday to make a podium. And Josh Gilbert taking out heat four, 58 0. And uh, potentially that can challenge for a semi final position. We've still got four heats to come. This 
uh, all of them under the minute here, 58.06 through 59.61. The, the eight swimmers in heat number four. Five. So the last of the unseeded heats now, Chow of Macau and Koko of Finland. They have those yellow lanes, the yellow lane ropes, four and five. Thank you, Max. And once again, lane one, a quick start out there. This is uh, Ang of Singapore. Uh, empty lane down there, seven, but uh, Chow and Koko and Macau and Finland in four and five. And they turn almost together there in uh, after the first 25. Yeah, it's Koko from Finland getting his hands on the wall first there, but more important to just build your speed through that first 50 meters and make sure you've got plenty of energy left to give for the second half of the race. So, Coco in 27.09, he's got a lead over a few tenths, but that was a really good pull out from Chow above him. The middle yellow lanes pulling away from the field here in heat five. Coco and Chow, four and five, or five and four respectively, as listed there. And uh, now it's lane number four, Chow, who makes his move. He takes over from Coco. Up there in lane number one, Ang of Singapore. He's right in the mix here, but it's going to be Chow. And then Ang, and then Coco. So Ang from lane number one was able to split that pair and take second place. 58.01, the winning time. Yes, he gets the win and he exactly matches his entry time, 58.01. He's happy. It might be a little bit comical to go at, uh, to match exactly your personal best in that entry time, but he moved through well through that last 25 metres, did. Charles Manho from Macau. Just watch the replay there. A lot of 58 second swims. This is the finish now. Maximilian Ang from Singapore wasn't far away on the far left of screen. Chow just got the touch over Ang and Coco as this result is under video review now for the first time this morning. He's probably having a bit of a laugh about that time. 58.01, how he'd like to um, have his time being uh, 57 something. But uh, so close yet again. Right, uh, we've got a disqualification. Coco was disqualified there. So Chow from uh, Ang in second and then Petrushov is elevated for Kyrgyzstan. First of the seeded heats. Heat six, Hinamoto and Sun, Japan and China. And uh, it's Hinamoto of Japan in lane number four. Down the bottom there, Stevens of Slovenia and McKee of uh, Iceland starting very well. And now also there, lane number three, it's Watanabe of Japan. Yeah, Hinamoto it is that turns first at 25, a new name. For the Japanese team we see swimming in lane four here, the 25 year old. I haven't seen him swim at the World Championships before, so he gets his chance here in Melbourne. 26 3 9, it's quick through the first 50. He's got a good lead over his Japanese teammate, Watanabe, Ike Watanabe, uh, a good 200 metre breaststroke swimmer. You can see him with that slower stroke rate, trying to take a little bit of ground off Hinamoto, but right now it's Japan first and second. Swimming alongside each other in four and three, respectively. Hinamoto over Watanabe. And they will finish first and second there. Third, it's going to be uh, Kachi of France. And uh, fourth home, it is Sun of China. So 56-62 for Yua Hinamoto. He's happy with that one. First swim of the championships in Melbourne gets his, uh, his week underway with a positive start. He's got an entry time of 55.7, which he swam earlier this year. That world record stands 55.28 from Ilya Shimanovich. So anything in the 55 range is truly world class. And that's a good first up heat swim from Yuya Hinamoto. Six. The results looking like this, 56-62 for the winner and 57-11 for second. Judge is happy with all swimmers. 
second last of the heats. Right up there in lane number two, we've got the Olympic champion, Adam Peaty, the one to watch for. Normally in four and five, but four here is Martin Engi, and Chin is in five for China. Oh, the starter held them on the blocks there. Peaty, not the best off that pullout. He's not known for the skills. He's known for his swim speed on top of the water. So there is at the top of screen in that red cap. He really moves through that last 10 metres into the wall. But in the middle of the pool, turning first. No, it is Petey turning first, but right there with him is Martinegi, the Italian, and Kin from China. So it says yellow lanes with Adam Petey in the red cap. He's making his world short course debut, in fact. He's never raced at the short course world championships before. Yes, Petey missed the long course world championships. He was injured in Budapest. I think it was a broken arm from memory, and uh, Martin Ingi was able to take out the title. Martin Ingi might win this one as well. He's uh, taken it out from Chin Petey back there in third place. So the uh, winner there, the Italian, Nicola Martin Ingi, bronze medalist from the Olympics, the world long course champion, 56.6. And he was one who didn't mind the absence of Adam Petey in Budapest. But Petey's back. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do throughout this competition. Yes, yeah, certainly he's back and uh, not in his preferred format, I would say. More of a long course specialist. He faded towards the finish there. Martinegi is the new man to beat in these sprint breast stroke events. The long course world champion takes out Heat 7 ahead of Kin and Petey. All of them going 56 seconds this morning. Yes, there are the results. Heat seven. Heat number eight. The last of the heats here. Nick Fink of the United States. Bronze medalist at uh, Budapest. Bronze also at the last short course championships in Abu Dhabi. He won all the breaststroke events of the World Cup. The 50, the 100 and the 200. And uh, Fink is in lane four at the moment. It's Sachi of uh, Turkey in lane number five and Sarasulo of Italy in lane three. But uh, Nick Fink, what can the American do here? Yeah, Fink was the 50 and 200 metre champion from Abu Dhabi last year, but he placed third in this 100 metre discipline. So there he is in that white cap in the middle of the pool. Sarasulo, the Italian, going out fast in that black hat. And Sachi from Turkey swimming in five well back at the moment. He's the 50 metre world record holder. So we would have thought he had a lot of speed to burn and we have seen him get disqualified many times at the world stage before. Fink it is who starts to make his move. The white cap of the American, he takes over. In second place, it's the Italian, Cerasulo. And third, it would be Corba of the Netherlands, Fink. Now Cerasulo's finishing hard. It's uh, going to be on the touch, on the touch, and I reckon it's gone to Fink. It has only just over Cherisulo and Corbo and Sachi in fourth placing. In the eighth and final heat, the winning time, 57.02. Yeah, a little bit slower there in the last heat for Fink and Cherisulo. Tick over 57 seconds, but Fink, the 29-year-old veteran, has got a lot of experience at this level now, long course world championship medalist. And it's important for the American relay teams as well. There is in that white cap, controls the finish, got over the top of Cherisulo on that last lap and did enough to take out heat number eight. So the United States from Italy and uh, the Netherlands, followed by Turkey to complete the heats of the men's 100 breaststroke. So the semi-finals coming up next for this event with uh, Martin Engi, the quickest through, Hinamoto and Chin, Petey, the fourth quickest through, and then Fink, the fifth quickest. And uh, a time of 57.87, good enough to make it through. Sun, 57.92, the uh, unlucky first swimmer to miss out. 
Yes, top 16 moving through to the semi-finals in the 50 metre and 100 metre events here in Melbourne. The 200 metres are a straight final at night, the top eight moving through, so we will see the semi-finals of this event still to come later this evening. As that wraps up the individual races this morning with just one relay to go. Two heats of the one relay, mind you, but uh, that's what we have. The women's 4 by 200 metres freestyle. And uh, the Netherlands holding that world record for some eight years now. Set in Doha at the World Championships just before Christmas in 2014, 7.32.85. South Africa, the Netherlands, the United States, China and Japan, the teams here in heat one. Well, the Netherlands hold a host of women's world records. They lost one last night to the Australians in the 4x100 freestyle relay. And without looking too much about names and times, I think the Australian women might be in a position to break that world record tonight again should they move through to the finals safely. So the first of two heats of the women's 4x200 metres uh, freestyle relay underway with uh, the United States led off by Erica Brown. In fact, South, South Africa in lane two by Pierce, and then the Netherlands by Vermoulin. The United States Brown, I mentioned, she uh, swam the anchor leg last night, I think I'm right in saying. China with Wu in lane five, and Igarashi of Japan swimming the first leg there for her team in lane six. Yep. Brown, uh, Brown was uh, the one who was um, mowed down by Emma McKeon, am I right in saying? Yeah, yeah, that yep. was Erica Brown last night. So silver medal in that 4x100 free relay. They did break the world record, the quartet from the United States, but, but of course got, got beaten by the team from Australia. So they are swimming well, the American women. And um, their team this morning, it's a young team this morning. Brown will hand off to Flickener. Gillian Cox and Leah Smith. And with only five teams in this first heat, there's six in the second heat. Generally speaking, the top four from both heats should move through to the final. And in this one, they won't necessarily be desperate to win this heat, but you wouldn't really want to be third or fourth. So uh, it's more about racing than times this morning as they move through to the 150 meter mark. The team from the Netherlands with Vermeulen leading off. They've got a bit of youth in there with Amani de Jong, Schultz from the second leg, Holkenborg and Steenbergen finishing this relay off. And quite often through the heats, these are uh, nations with a little bit more depth. They will put an experienced swimmer on that fourth leg just so that they can give them a little bit more control to do what's needed to qualify for the final. Erica Brown touching first there. Yes, as they complete the first of the four legs, the United States are leading uh, over the Netherlands by a fraction of a second there, about seven one hundredths of a second it was. So the second leg swimmers in the water, Flickinger, De Jong for the Netherlands. In third place, it would be Japan. Namba is swimming the second leg for Namba. In between uh, Japan and the United States in five is Cheng, and then South Africa with Tucker. Yeah, so the United States with a handy lead just over the Netherlands at this moment, at uh, this point in the race. And as I said, a bit of youth in the middle legs of this relay for both of those nations before Steenbergen and Leah Smith will battle it out on that fourth leg. So at the moment, Ali Flickener, she's the 200 butterfly specialist, 400 IM Olympic medalist as well training at uh, Arizona State University under Bob Bowman. And uh, at this point in her career, at 28 years of age, still competing at an extremely high level and, and improving as well. So this relay kickstarts a busy week for her. She'll be featuring those longer butterfly and longer IM events. She'll be busy here in Melbourne and gets her chance to potentially post a time and try and make that finals team tonight. 
for the United States. I would assume that they that they bring in what well, Leah Smith will, will swim on that. They'll bring in Gemmel, I think, and off the top of my head, I'm not too else not sure who else would be guaranteed a finals position for that US team. Well, certainly at World Championships, long course World Championships and uh, Olympics, you'd say, well, Katie Ledecky's a, a shoe in but she's not here competing. So uh, there's no doubt Leah Smith would be the captain of the team. You would think she's swimming the anchor here. We're halfway through this first heat. Gillian Cox in the water now for the United States. Now taking over second place in lane six would be Japan. It's uh, Waka Kabori swimming the second leg or the third leg here. In lane three, the Netherlands with Suki Hulkenberg. And then in back in fourth place, New of China and South Africa holding down fifth with Versace. Yes, and it's the United States out in front. Gillian Cox, just only 17 years of age, so getting good experience. She'll be in the fastest heat of the women's 800 freestyle tonight. So she's got a busy second day of racing here in Melbourne. And uh, yeah, well, judging off that that 4x100 free relay last night for the United States, it's Alex Walsh and Kate Douglas, the IM swimmers, who are more known for their sprint freestyle. I'm not sure if they'd be confident enough to extend out to a 200 metres in the short course metres event. They might be able to do a 200 yards, but 200 metres is a different story. So not a lot of depth in the middle distance freestyle ranks for the United States women here in Melbourne. It's an interesting point you make. Uh, the United States, uh, they swim in yards, metres, um, at most parts of the world. But you say it's a big difference. And I'm just curious as to why that would be. Effectively, it's a, a difference of, what, 10%, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yards is about 22 metres. Mm. So it's, it's about 10%. But in those 200-metre events, it's about 10 seconds longer in duration. So if you're a sprinter trying to go further in distance, that, 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 that 10 seconds really, really pays a price, especially if you're not used to it and you're not conditioned to it. So it'll be interesting to see who the final makeup of this team is. Leah Smith's in the water now. As you mentioned, the captain of this United States team. She's got a body a lead of about three body lengths, so she'll just control this one. She's not going to want to exert too much effort. She'll also be in that 800 freestyle final or fastest heat of that tonight. So surprising that they would use Smith this morning. That, that probably just shows the lack of depth that they have here in Melbourne and also the, uh, the, the, the bravery from Leah Smith and the camaraderie to, to put her hand up and say, yeah, I'll swim the heat before racing two finals tonight. And it is interesting, having said there are, what, only five teams here and uh, in the second heat there are six. So uh, you would think that even though there's probably not a lot of 200 metre depth there in this American team, they only needed to uh, beat home the time of three other teams to make the final. So it is interesting. Smith obviously doesn't mind racing as much as she possibly can, and she's uh, in for a busy day. This is uh, the first of her swims, the 800 metres, and then ultimately this final this evening as well. And uh, she's happy to get the cobwebs out of her system. So she's coming down with just over 50 to swim. The United States in front. It's very close for second between the Netherlands and uh, also uh, in lane number five, China. So Zhang has moved through the field for China. She's still just behind Steenbergen of the Netherlands. And uh, we talk about Leah Smith with the busy program and she really has switched off now. She turns, she's got a handy lead and uh, she's just bringing it home now. They're starting to close the gap a little on her. But uh, she is comfortably on her way to the finish and they stop the clock at 7.42, 91. The United States, the Netherlands in second place in China third. Japan faded to finish fourth and it'll be South Africa in fifth place. Yeah, good swim there from Smith, controlling things at the finish, safe relay changeovers as well for all the swimmers. And uh, the United States comfortably taking out the first heat. And when we're talking about not a lot of depth, not a lot of depth when they're talking about competing for the gold medal here, which we're so used to the United States doing. They, they from memory, they did win in Budapest this year in a big upset, didn't they, with Ledecky? 
The Australian team started favourites on paper at the Olympics and the World Championships in the longer relay and didn't quite get there. So we saw them surprisingly challenge the Australian team last night in the 4x100 metre relay. But um, it's going to be a good battle come finals time. There's the uh, results of heat one, the United States from the Netherlands, China, Japan and South Africa. And uh, the last of our races this morning, last of our relays here in Australia and Canada in, four, in five and four respectively in this second heat of the four by two freestyle relay. Now the teams are coming out, the word uh, coming through Incidentally, the Australians listed to swim with Neil, Harris, Castelluso and Perkins. Uh, there has been a, a change due to medical circumstances, but it hasn't been clarified as to who's out and who's in. So we'll rely on your expertise, Bobby, and uh, see if we can pick up who well, is looks the like, new one. Looks like on the right of screen there, that, that's Laura Taylor. Right, Castelluso's in front of her making her Australian debut, so the two butterflies there, and it might be Jamie Perkins. She swam earlier, didn't she? She swam the 800 freestyle hit earlier, a little bit off her best, making her Australian team debut was Perkins. So she's out of this relay, and it looks like Laura Taylor's going to sub in. The Australian team led off by Leah Neal and Meg Harris putting their firepower up front. Neil to lead off Australia. Mary Sophie Harvey of Canada. Second and last of the heats of the 4x2 freestyle for women. So it's uh, New Zealand in two, led off by Erika Fairweather, silver medalist from the 400 free last night. And then Brazil with Boldacini, Canada with Harvey, Australia with Neil, Hong Kong with Ng, and Slovakia with Ripkova. Yeah, Erica Fairweather, the silver medalist in the corner free last night, earning first there for New Zealand in lane two. Leah, Leah Neal also in that corner free final, leading off the Australian team in five. And Mary Sophie Harvey getting the Canadians out to a strong start. So. Looking at this Australian team on paper, I would assume that Leah Neal and Meg Harris, the first two legs, they might be competing against each other to post the time to be in the finals team tonight because the finals team for the Australian women, I, I would assume they bring in O'Callaghan, Pallister and Emma McKeon if McKeon wants to put her hand up for the 200 freestyle. But what a formidable team that is. So Leah Neal's, she's definitely swimming this one aggressively, but it's, a, it's a, been a big... First couple of laps from Fairweather. She's in great form, still only 18 years of age. And uh, she's going to be a threat in the 200, 400 eight, and 800 metre distances. And while we speculate about the makeup of teams for the final, and uh, of course we were doing so with the United States and suggesting maybe there was a certain lack of depth to challenge for gold medals, but that is compounded by the fact that this is a six day meet. Long course, it's over eight days, so you've got to look at the programs of the swimmers. They, in all likelihood, would have swimmers who are more than capable, but it's a condensed program, so what else have they got on in on those days? Yes, yeah, certainly, and, and this relay, it's, it's the longest of the relays, obviously, so uh, it's physically taxing, and a lot of these swimmers do have the 800 fastest heat tonight, so you do need to really be careful and save your stars if your team does have the depth for those finals when medals are on the line. So Leah Neal hands off to Meg Harris, who's taken a bit of ground off the New Zealand team now. Caitlin Dean's in the water, taken over from Erica Fairweather. That was a great one, 54.2 lead off swim for Fairweather. So uh, Australia just starting to edge closer, maybe even ahead of the New Zealand team now through this first uh, second part of the leg. Yeah, really good uh, first leg there by Fairweather of New Zealand, giving the Kiwis, Australia's uh, Tasman, trans-Tasman cousins, the early lead, but now it's uh, their trans-Tasman rivals, Australia, who take over with uh, Neil through the 300-metre mark. Neil of Australia in front, Deans of New Zealand, 
And uh, then holding down third at the moment would be Brazil with Diamante, Canada with Pickram. And then it's a distance back to the other two teams, and that is Slovakia with Potoka and Holland, of Hong Kong. Still Australia out in front. Yeah, Pickram in the water for Canada. She spun the 100 breaststroke earlier this morning. 200 IM final last night, so she's been very busy early in the program here in Melbourne. The Canadians have had some success in this relay as well, making multiple Olympic and World Championship podiums over the past six years. And Pickram will hand off to Kelsey Wald and Rebecca Smith. They could probably bring in Taylor Ruck for this relay tonight too. So it's a strong looking team on paper as Meg Harris touches first at the halfway point of this relay. She splits 154.2. So strong split there from Meg Harris. So Australia leading New Zealand, then Canada, Brazil, and then Slovakia and Hong Kong as we're into the second half of this 4x2 freestyle relay heat. Uh, Brittany Castelluso of Australia swimming the third leg. Uh, Summer Osborne of New Zealand. And uh, then we've got Kelsey Wong of Canada and uh, Gabrielle Roncato of Brazil. Down to Teresa Ivanova of Slovakia and uh, Han Yu Zhi of Hong Kong. Yeah, really smooth stroke there from Castelluso. She's making her Australian team debut here, butterfly specialist. But filling in on this 4x200 freestyle relay. And uh, really strong off the walls. It's about four or five underwater kicks of every turn, which is not easy to do at all, especially as the race gets longer and longer. And uh, moving into second position now, that's the team from Canada, Kelsey Wog, swimming on this third leg, also a breaststroke specialist. So the Canadians using Pickram and Wog in the middle parts of this relay. And uh, Brazil and New Zealand just falling back ever so slightly now. As uh, they've gone through the 550 metre mark now. So uh, we're getting towards the end of this third leg. And uh, waiting to swim for the lead team. Australia is Laura Taylor. Canada will finish off with uh, Rebecca Smith. Ruby Heath of New Zealand and uh, Aline Rodriguez of Brazil. Uh, out after Brittany Castelluso at this stage, though, and she completes her 200 metres. So one leg remaining with Australia leading at Canada in second place. And then it's Brazil and New Zealand. Back we go to Slovakia and Hong Kong. Final leg swimmer there, Taylor of Australia, Wog Canada. You've got Rodriguez and Heath, Brazil and New Zealand, Chipulkova of Slovakia and Lamb of Hong Kong. Yeah, it's a big lead for the Australian team. So, as we said earlier, Laura Taylor filling in for Jamie Perkins on the end of this Australian relay team. And uh, in second right now in that red suit, look at that nice long stroke from Rebecca Smith of Canada. A really uh, experienced 100 and 200 freestyle swimmer and he's always on these strong Canadian relay teams. Just getting challenged there for second place by the team of Brazil. In the water, that's Rodriguez really trying to push through and try and move up the position. But it's all the Australian team here. Laura Taylor doing a fine job on this freestyle leg with 75 metres to go. Uh, and they've been out in front not necessarily the whole race because New Zealand uh, were given a wonderful start by Erica Fairweather so there wasn't much between Australia and New Zealand in the opening stages but from the second leg onwards with uh, Australia represented by Meg Harris the Australians have got on top and have never really been threatened so they're going to win this pretty comfortably Remembering that the top eight times will determine who goes through to the final. There are only five teams. The United States taking out the first heat. And uh, six teams here. So only three are going to miss out. And uh, the Australians are looking pretty comfortable indeed. So Australia 744-77. Canada second. Uh, Brazil finished third and then New Zealand in heat two. Now they can 
start looking ahead to this evening. In fact, all the swimmers can start looking ahead to this evening. You can see the relay teams behind the blocks with clothes and towels on. It's the coldest position in Melbourne right now. The Australian team taking out heat two, 7.44, slightly slower than what we saw from the United States in heat one, but another really good showing to come for those finals tonight between the Australian and the American women. Diving in there, that was Harris on that second leg. She was one of the fastest splits of the field, 154. And uh, we'll have to wait and see what the makeup of that Australian relay team is tonight. As up their sleeve, they've got a Callahan, Pallister, potentially Emma McKeon. And I forgot about Maddie Wilson. So they could do a total swap or potentially Neil or Harris could remain in the team. It was almost two seconds in the end between Australia and Canada and Brazil in third place. So that's the way they finished in the second heat of the 4 by 2 The teams through to the final then. The United States, the quickest of the times. They'll have lane four. Australia in five, the Netherlands in three and China six. Two for Canada, Brazil in seventh. Slovakia, South Africa and Hong Kong don't make it through to the final. We have a swim-off ahead of us now. This is to determine the final spot in the final of the men's 50 metres butterfly. And uh, that was um, uh, left over from last night. So uh, Nicholas Santos with that world record. Of course, Santos has already booked his spot in the final, 21.75. Zabo also sharing that record at 21.75. So we know that um, seven spots in the final have been booked. But we have one spot to go because Ilya Karun of Canada, this exciting youngster, and also Daniel Zaitstev of Estonia, both recorded times of 22.28. And uh, they were equal eight. So we've got to decide who goes into lane eight via, via this uh, swim off on day two of competition, Bobby. Yes, Ilya Karun broke the junior world record in the heats and broke it again in the semi-finals, tying with Zaitsev, 22.28, as you mentioned. And they race here today to join the joint world record holders, Sabo and Santos in the final. Carter, Ponty, Laclo, Kush, and Senwei Tiong. So an exciting swim off here. We saw one yesterday after the heats with Manadu and Kostanyi, and here we go again for a race for eighth position in the final. We know that Zabo will start from lane four and Santos lane six in the final. It's between this pair though as to who takes lane eight. Karun in lane four and Zaitsev in lane five. It is up and down, 50 metres butterfly. Big start, Zaitsev. Oh, definitely the better off the blocks for Zaitsev at the bottom of screen, but Karun gets onto that wall cleanly. We'll see if he can make some ground up on Zaitsev off this turn. Well, stroke for stroke, still Zaitsev in front. Zaitsev, Karun trying to mow him down. It's on the touch, Zaitsev gets it. Zaitsev goes into the final. An equal world junior record, though, set by Karun. So that is a magnificent performance. That's uh, two days in a row he's broken the world junior record. In fact, the third time overall for Ilya Karun of Canada, but it is not enough to make the final. He will be the first reserve should there be a scratching. Zaitsev takes it. Yeah, and got he... off the blocks fast, did Zaitsev, and off the turn was able to hold that power. This is the finish, not much in it at all in these swim offs, but. A perfectly timed stroke onto the wall. Gets a victory by 0.13 of a second. It's a personal best time for Zaitsev as well. 22.1. That'll well and truly put him in the mix for medals. And he'll join the other seven finalists tonight in that men's 50 butterfly final. 22.15 for Zaitsev and a world junior record. But he couldn't do any more. He's not in the final. Karun, 22.28.
Yes, it's been a busy morning session here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre with that swim off and, of course, all of those uh, other heats as well. Yeah, we saw defending champion Siobhan Jorge hit the water in Melbourne for the first time. She's fastest qualifier in the women's 100 free, just ahead of Emma McKeon with that dead heat finish with Marit Steenbergen to close out the women's heats. Jordan Crooks, what a performance from the 19-year-old from the Cayman Islands to qualify fastest in the men's 100 free and a star-studded field featuring Maxime Grousseau and, of course, the long-course world record holder, David Popovich. Not to be forgotten, Carl Chalmers swimming in front of his home fans. He's the short-course world record holder in this event and the Olympic champion from back in 2016. Second fastest qualifier this morning was Chalmers, and he'll have his eyes on Popovich and Crooks tonight in the men's 100 free semifinals. And a return to form again in 2022 for Ruta Melutite, easily the fastest qualifier this morning. A really relaxed finish, but so much speed and power for the Lithuanian breaststroker. On the men's side, Niccolò Martinegi, the long course world champion from Italy, looking to carry on the strong form of the Italian men, the fastest qualifier ahead of Adam Peaty from Great Britain, who also gets his first race here in Melbourne. And we close the morning with the women's 4x200 freestyle relay. The United States being the fastest qualifiers ahead of the strong team from Australia. We've got a big evening ahead of us. We've got seven finals coming your way and uh, also semi-finals in four heats there. So uh, in four other events, I should say, a couple of relays, that medley relay final and uh, also, of course, the 4x2 um, and semi-finals and the 100 frees for the women and the men. So a really good night of swimming ahead of us and that'll get underway at uh, 7.30 local time. So that's in, what, round about six hours from now. You've got time to relax and uh, get excited about it. Day two of the 16th FINA World Championships. The Brighton Beach Boxers, they are in play for the medal ceremonies. We had plenty of medal ceremonies last night and we'll have seven of them this evening. The stands will be full in a few hours from now and uh, there'll be some terrific swimming over the course of the meet. Thanks for your company. We look forward to you joining us again in a few hours from now.